to 17 days. Thank you very much, sir. It's a really honor to get connected with you, sir. And Thank yes, you. we are on a live. We are on live on YouTube. So I would like to request technical team. I think uh, all the guest speakers and all the guests of honors have the option as a co-host. Hello, Linda. How are you? Yeah. I'm great. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Warm welcome, dear. Warm welcome. Okay. So, uh, Gurjeet, ma'am, are you ready? Yeah, we have a speaker from the Toastmaster, Pradeep Shetty, sir. Welcome, sir. I would like to request technical team. Uh, Pradeep Shetty sir is also here. Please uh, make uh, her, uh, make him co-host. Okay, sir. There is a message uh, from the Alin. Aline uh, says that uh, she wants to become a co-host. She is one of the guest speaker. Uh, Gurjeet, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So, uh, I would like to request technical team, uh, please uh, make a Gurjeet core co-host. We are requesting to all the students of the expression uh, English and the uh, students from the uh, Odisha Imperial College and the students of the Indoor uh, Management Institute and Research Center. We will make you co-host after the uh, section, uh, section of the students turn. Okay. First of all, we will have the uh, sessions from the guest of honors. Then we will uh, have the sessions of the guest speakers. So, Gurjeet, are you able to unmute yourself? Okay. I would like to request technical team, uh, please help Gurjeet Kaur, ma'am. Yes, good morning, ma'am, and good morning, everyone. Yeah, so I would like to uh, introduce Gurjeet Kaur, ma'am. Uh, she will be the moderator of uh, today's session. Welcome, Gurjeet, ma'am. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll start with the uh, event now. Uh, so good morning and a warm welcome uh, and namaste to uh, all, everyone present here. Namaste from India. Today we all are here for celebrating day three of Global Peace and Sustainable Development Summit 2022. This event is organized by Witty Gossip Association in alliance with Oriental University, Indore, Man Indore Institute of Management and Research Center, and Express English. So before we move ahead, I would like to give a short introduction about the associate, associate partner with Witty Gossip, that is Expressions Learning Resources Private Limited. Expressions is a unique English platform with the vision to demystify and make English accessible to all. The mission of Expressions is to help 350 million vernacular language speakers with English communication and employability skills. Till now, they have prepared their students for employment through various programs like Disha, Sarthi, and Sahyo for colleges, technical institutions, and IT institutes, respectively. 
for addressing the language gap expressions use brain code method over the classical ways of teaching english they are working towards empowering school students college students homemakers and young professionals i would like to thank team expressions for their for their co uh, continuous efforts for changing lives of people by creating such a platform moving towards for our day 3 for our day 3 goal that is good health and well being so first of all let us know why is good health and well being so important good health is central to human happiness and well being that contributes significantly to prosperity and wealth and even economic progress as healthy populations are more productive save more and live longer so moving ahead with the dis with discussion on day 3 goal that is good health and well being i would like to request our guest of honor for the day madam sukar from united kingdom yes uh, actually uh, sukar give us a video message from the land of uh, united kingdom so uh, with the uh, permission of the suman sir and all the guest of honors i would like to play the video of the sukor uh, thank you very much sir so give me a, a, a few minutes i will play the video Hello there. My name's Sue Kerr. I'm from the UK and I'd like to thank Witty Gossip Association very much for inviting me to speak. I hope the sound is audible. Yes, ma'am, it's loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much. Hello there. My name's Sue Kerr. I'm from the UK and I'd like to thank Witty Gossip Association very much for inviting me to speak at this Global Peace and Development Summit. I've chosen to speak on the topic of health and well-being largely because it's a topic that's very very close to my own heart both for personal reasons in terms of my own previous health history and for professional reasons in to, insofar as what I do today which is help people to understand how the correlation between our mind and body can if we so choose engender a much better more positive healthier state of health within us all for sure the pandemic caused massive disruption on a global scale did it not in terms of with the essential health services in terms of services across the world being stopped disrupted and completely abolished in some instances and i think it's vital for us to bear that all in mind as we move forward because we've taken a massive back step and now we have to start to take incrementally very small baby steps forward in order to not only redress the balance of the last 2 years but to continue on target with regard to the SDG goal of health and well-being as far as the United Nations is concerned how are we going to do that for me the 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 root issue of all illness begins both in our body and our mind it is absolutely imperative that we come to understand that the way we think becomes the way we speak becomes the way we act becomes what we believe so if we believe ourselves to be ill if we believe ourselves to be overweight it's largely because we're continually reminding ourselves of that fact and yet most illnesses are addressable and most states of health are not only addressable but reversible clearly some of the bigger issues cancers and the mental health issues such as schizophrenia clearly they are not um, a one size fits all and have to be dealt with effectively by the medics but in turn if we each of us take responsibility and hold ourselves accountable for our own states of health within our own circle of influence ourselves our families a closer circle of friends even out in the wider community then we can start to make those small incremental changes which when we put them together 
turn from a trickle into a tidal wave of not only better habits, but better health and better mindsets and an overall sense of fulfillment and well-being. It's not an easy road, but it has to start at grassroots, so I believe. Certainly within the families, <clears throat> definitely within the communities, with all our communities globally, we all of us have some form of authoritarian um, association or company. In this, in this country, in the UK, we have the National Health Service. I know in other countries that the, the likes of that doesn't exist, but we all have something that we can start with. When we start where we are, we work with, got, with what we've got and we see how far we get, then life becomes far more simpler and far easier. When it comes to our mental health and our physical well-being, as I've said, for me, they are inextricably intertwined. So it starts on a very, very basic level. Teach those you know, teach those you love, that what we ingest, what we put into our bodies, will reap the rewards, or otherwise, in years to come. We need to train and educate our young people to eat a rainbow diet. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. We need to educate our families, our friends, certainly our children, that refined sugar is extremely bad for us. And in, and in too many cases, it becomes toxic. We can redress so many of the world ills and reach the United Nations SDG Goal 3 by taking very basic steps. The ordinary man or woman in the street may not know or even be aware that their health is within their power to control. Yes, I'm not talking about when we have instances of cancer and instances of multiple cirrhosis and things like that things that really genuinely need massive medical intervention but there is lots that we can educate people to do pre-disease in order that the disease doesn't exist within our own selves drink more water take vitamin d in massive quantities if necessary eat your vegetables Train those around you to do the things that mother... Hello there, my name's Sue Kerr, I'm from the UK and I'd like to thank Witty Gossip Association. I think now video is visible, right? No, it's actually no, not. No. no, it's actually not. Okay, video is not visible? No. Okay, okay. So let's continue. Uh, with the uh, voice only. only. Yep, yep. Yeah, with the audio only. Okay. Around you to do the things that Mother Nature intended us for us to do. Regardless of where we live in the world on this planet, there is an abundance, an absolute abundance of natural products that we can all of us use quickly, easily, effectively, and more importantly, cheaply. In areas where there is poverty and destruction and war, it's far less likely to be able to do. However, we start small and for each step we take, we move further forward to achieving the goal that we all of us were born to be entitled to have. A happy, healthier, more productive life. We can't leave the circumstances of our life to chance. We can't leave the circumstances of our life to others. We have to take control where it matters most, in our minds and in our hearts, and set an intention that from this day forward, we will do whatever it takes in order that we can make ourselves and our families healthy. The United Nations initiative is a fantastic initiative, but they cannot do it without each of us helping them. We each of us can help one person, at least ourselves. If we have families and friends and loved ones, we can help to educate them. And in this way, we can globally educate the world to lead happier, more meaningful, and definitely healthier and productive lives. 
My name is Sue Kerr. I'm a mental wellbeing mindset specialist from the UK. I wish you well. Stay well, stay healthy. Namaste. So uh, this is the uh, Sue Kaur from the land of uh, England, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, so uh, I would like to uh, uh, request to Gurjeet Kaur ma'am, uh, please proceed with the next uh, guest of honor. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So I think it is rightly said by Sukar, ma'am, that most of our illness is irreversible. It's just the way we think. It's how we think. Ma'am, over to you. Sorry, Gurjeet, we couldn't hear you at all. Yes, Gurjeet, actually, uh, okay. your voice is breaking because your network bandwidth is very low. Is it clear now, ma'am? Yes, yes. Much better. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Now we'll move to the next guest of honor with us, Dr. Sanakshi Rohela from Dubai. So I would like to request Sanakshi ma'am to share her ideas in front of us. Sanakshi ma'am, if you're here, over to you. Yes, hi, Gurjeet, can you hear me? Am I yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma ma loud and clear, ma'am. Please proceed, ma'am. You are most welcome here. Thank you so very much. And it's very, very kind of you to invite me. I was so happy to hear Sue's thoughts on, um, on health and well-being. And I hope that I'm able to contribute as well. Uh, hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are. And uh, thank you for joining uh, this summit today. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to, uh, you know, be the guest of honor as well. Um, I know my time is very short and I have, you know, once you get a professor speaking, they hardly stop. So uh, I have to be mindful of that. So I'll quickly come to, uh, you know, um, the topic today, which is extremely important and something that we need to speak regularly on so that it hammers to the mind of the people. Because usually, you know, conversations need to be hammered these days, unfortunately, uh, because they are very short lived in the memory. But to start with, thank you. This is really important that we talk about health and well being. And this is specifically very important to me because. I come from a psychology background and I take care of young children. I work as a registrar with Amity University in Dubai and also teach in the field of psychology. Uh, when it comes to SDG three, which is the goal three, I have a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. So uh, let's hope we have the patience in the morning to hear me. <laughs> the first and the most important is how it is an integrative and collective approach. I often think that whenever we speak about sustainability and developmental goals, it's often pushed on as if the banter goes to someone else. It's a very integrated collective approach that one needs to follow to be able to understand that what we often do is that we discount on ourselves in the race of life and we forget to take people's hand together to be able to build sort of community which is more disease free which is more healthy, which is talking about mental prosperity in general. So for me, how I take a developmental goal is my individual responsibility and my collective responsibility. So I see the trail in the fashion of individual society, nation, individual society, community, nation, and that's how this should spread across. So I'll break it down into two segments, please. One is the fact that, yes, uh, you know, a good takeaway from Sue's, uh, you know, Sue's talk here was the fact that prevention is better than cure. So at an individual level, it is so important for us to understand that we, we often wait till the end for something to happen and then go to the doctors and immediately try and secure ourselves. 
However, what is important is that we understand those signs and symptoms. And we take early prevention and we take early guidance, which is most important. So often in what I have seen in general also is that people don't come to me as a psychologist when they're distressed. They come to me when they have a fully blown depression. So when your signs and symptoms are recognizable physiologically, psychologically, then why not recognize them and move towards them to be able to um, you know, cure them, to be able to prevent them to becoming a full-fledged disorder. So, you know, if we look at that, then, then the second thing that I really want to talk about is how much we discount ourselves as well. So why, why is that an important aspect to think about is because life is really struggling. I mean, from the time I remember in COVID, uh, we used to talk about the concept of quarantine anxiety. Today, I feel the quarantine anxiety, anxiety has majorly become quintessential anxiety. It's an anxiety which is now a part of you. And so, you know, it is so difficult for us to part from that anxiety because it is a part of us. If you, if you know what I mean to say here. So for us, it's very important to understand that we need to take care of ourselves to be able to take care of a certain society and community. So us is the prime. So at every level, there are so many students here who are attending this summit also. Please understand you are your own priority. And when it comes to uh, you know, health and well-being, I think I'll come to my next uh, segment here. When we come to health and well-being, most of the time people only talk about a physical and a mental health perspective. Nobody talks about social health perspective. The impact that our social circle also has on us is an imperative thing to talk about. How we maintain social relationships is also a very imperative thing to talk about, which we often discount upon. Why is social health important? You know, often there is a debate about, do we have a social circle that flourishes? Do we have a social circle that is authentic? Do we have a social circle that is, gives us autonomy, independence to be able to grow? How does our social circle or social health important and how does that impact uh, our overall well-being and health? It's very indicative of the kind of lockdowns that we have survived. So when you survived the lockdown, there were two, three things that came that surfaced, I would say. Obviously, it's important for you to keep your mental agility very high, for you to be mentally immune and not mentally constipated. But besides that, what is also important is how people around you and how you add it to people's lives around you. And that had a direct impact. There were so many people who suffered from being lonely or having psychosomatic stress disorders uh, or, you know, going through any sort of physiological health issue minus the support of people. So I always feel that whenever we talk about health and well-being, we need to take into account our social and temperamental health also, which is very important. So for me, um, you know, I, I understand people often talk about, you know, it, even while I was reading about the developmental goals and we, when we were having these kind of sessions in the university also, we often talk about tuberculosis, we often talk about AIDS, we often talk about, you know, other sorts of uh, diseases, but we never talk about the fact that depression um, is second to cardiovascular diseases in the global, uh, you know, disease index. And it is, it is an epidemic in itself, whether you like it or not, it's a very silent killer. And it just grows into the system. You know, there is a very thin line between sadness and depression that people often discount upon. So um, I think I have, I've taken my share, but I'm going to give some takeaways. These are very important takeaways for all the students here. And I hope you're able to act upon it so that we're able to have much more developed societies. My first takeaway is please understand prevention should be the mantra, not necessarily cure. So when prevention is the mantra, how can we prevent as we, if I, if we identify the signs and symptoms and we seek help? Seeking help should not be a taboo, whether it is physical, 
problem, whether it is mental problem, whether it is even social social problem, you know, such as I'm unable to have friends or I'm I'm, I'm unable to, um, you know, uh, reach out to people or I have difficulty understanding a group of people interacting with them. I have communication issues. So these kind of things need to be dealt with. So please understand prevention is important. You know, um, I, I, I'll give you a simplistic example. I find it so difficult when I ask a question in class while I teach them, and I can see that the student knows the answer, but they have difficulty having the thought speech coordination, which means whatever they're thinking to be able to throw that out of in speech is a difficulty for them which I find so stressful. I, you know, I have to reach out to them saying, you know the answer, answer me, you know the answer. And then they have difficulty, you know, putting it in words and then being able to express themselves. Well, that's a sign you need to work on yourself. That's a sign, please don't ignore that. So take away one prevention should be the mantra, not cure in general. Number two, Keep your physical, mental, and social health as a priority. You are extremely important. So if you are unable to see yourself as important, then you're not a very significant contributor to society because you come with self-doubt. You come with a lot of dilemma, doubt. And if you come from doubt and dilemma, can you deliver me a non-confused personality? No, you can't. So unfortunately, because you are confused and you suffer from self-doubt, you're able to give self-doubt and confusion to the world outside, which is so unfortunate. So please make sure that you are your own priority and that you're a very sorted, clear thought process. You understand your physical health very well. You work on your mental health very well. You work on your social temperamental health very well as well. Number three, the future of humanity. I was at a summit, you know, in the Dubai Expo. Dubai Expo had some of the brilliant speakers. And there was this discussion. It was a summit called the International Humanitarian Summit. And they constantly spoke about the future of humanity. And they constantly support and talk about the support systems that we can, you know, we can build. And so for where it is essential for me is to understand that the future of humanity should be in building stronger developed communities. Now, these communities can be stronger developed only if they are disease free or if they are working. See, you cannot be 100% disease free. We understand that, but you can aim for it. So you can aim for having early diagnosis kind of a system. You can aim for having an, um, you know, uh, an approach where you understand that there is something wrong and then you reach out to people and then you go for people and understand that you're able to make a change, which is essential. So that's important that the future of humanity is, you know, strong, disease-free, prosperous, flourishing. So we need to be flourishing, not being foolish. That's an important idea. And the last and the most important is I'll, I'll, I'll again uh, sort of repeat what UN said, which is ensuring healthy living and promoting well being. But what is important is adding qualitative longevity to life. And then you as an individual need to understand what are the qualitative parameters of my life. What are things, for example, if someone enjoys working and they are very passionate about money making. So if they spend eight hours, 12 hours, 15 hours at home, not making any money, that might affect their mental health. So you need to really see what you, what you value in life. And if you value, and if it is important for you to have a very established name on a lot of money and money is your priority and you feel confident with that, then go for it. Even if other people tell you this is not important, no, sorry, go for it. That's what you're passionate about. So there is no qualms about the fact that you like it. So please make sure that you sit today and understand these are the qualitative parameters of my life. This gives me happiness and I will definitely reach out for it. So at the end, like Sue says, stay healthy, stay happy. 
And if there is anything that I could, I have contributed to, uh, even if there is 0.5% of something that, that you have learned from this lecture, thank you. I think it was worth me joining this summit today. Thank you so much, everybody. And have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a pleasure having you today. And thank you for your takeaways. We'll surely try to follow all your takeaways. Really valuable. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. So moving ahead with our next guest of honor, that is Dr. C. Pavel from United States. We would like to hear from you, Anita, ma'am. Anita, ma'am, over to you. Okay, Anita. Okay. Okay. Hi, thank you. So, thank you so much. Namaste, everyone, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Dr. Supriya and the Witty Team Gossip Association. You know, SDG number three, good health and well-being. You know, April is the National Poetry Month. So I'd like to start off with a little haiku. Yang, the day four rained, not to get caught in the rain, Yin hid to keep dry. With everything within the universe, there is balance. And if the masculine energy is higher than the feminine energy, there is not balance. Therefore, health and well-being is not as ideal as it, as it can be. So there must be a balance. Health, good health and well-being. That's the homeostasis of it all. So we know physical, physical is more the health part of it. And maintaining that physical health, let's live within our means. That reduces so much stress, living within our means. Have, get your rest and, and exercise, and then also have fun. Now within the well-being, that's nurturing and nourishing our love language. What is your love language? What resonates with you? Because how we how we serve another will it gives a very big indication of what our love language is. And then learn to live life through rose-colored glasses. I don't mean living life that everything is all positive and everything is hunky-dory. No, living life through rose-colored glasses is seeing through the lens of love. Seeing through the lens of love. Recognizing that those thorns are means of protection. And also knowing that you have the strength to endure any adversity. Knowing that you have the courage to face any challenge or obstacle, knowing that you have the compassion to share in non-judgmental love, and knowing that you have the joy to experience that deep happiness. See, good health and well-being encompasses the four legitimate needs by Matthew Kelly, physical, intellectual, spiritual, and emotional. And we know that dis-ease and disorder, 20% physical, 80% emotional, 80% emotional, that goes soulful deep. Sometimes in preventive medicine, we also need to go beyond that physical and start healing that soul. So good health and well-being, that's embracing all of who we are. I know in the United States, we tend to think so, so much, we, we put so much emphasis on our limitations, on our flaws, on our imperfections, and that is fine. What we want to do now is start accepting all of who we are, start recognizing that there is perfection within that imperfection. Because when we recognize that imperfection, then we know that when we begin to feel that we are not enough, we can tap into that perfection that's going to share with us, yes, we are. When we start to experience that, mm, I don't know if I'm deserving mental health and well-being, we can tap into, yes, I am deserving. When we feel those experiences of not being deserving or worthy, we can tap into because we recognize, we recognize that we are, there is perfection within our imperfection. So good health and well-being is maintaining that balance that yes, we are human and let's bring up the knowledge that we are also 
divine. That is individual and that is collectively because when we begin to really love and embrace, when we embrace who we are, that means we can embrace those flaws. We can embrace those limitations. We can embrace that imperfection because we know by God within us, there is that perfection. And good health and well-being is maintaining that balance that we are human and divine. And good health and well-being is so, so very, very doable. Thank you so much. And I hope you got something out of this message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anita, ma'am. Uh, Anita, I would like to request you. Yeah, please do this uh, gesture. So I would, uh, I would be able to capture you. Please do this gesture. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much, dear. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Please proceed, Gurdjieff. It is rightly said that the world that the world is full of gems and diamonds. And we are having having some of here, some of them here today. Thank you. Thank you for your valuable contribution, ma'am. So moving ahead with the program. Before we uh, before I call out. With these speakers, I would just uh, like to remind uh, our dear guest of honors and speakers that you all are requested to take care about the time limits for speech. Time limit is four to five minutes. And for presentation, time limit is 10 to 12 minutes. There's an awarding a certificate in digital format to appreciate your efforts by the Global Empowerment Awards 2022 and the Global Pride Excellence Award 2022 for the best speech and best presentation for each and every goal. Warm regards from Team Witty Gossip. So we'll continue with the speakers. So I'll, I'll start with the, uh, Mr. Pradeep Shetty. Pradeep sir, if you're here, Pradeep Shetty from India. Pradeep sir, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much and namaste. To all, uh, all my colleagues and guest of honor, Sue, Dr. Sonakshi, Dr. Anita, and uh, each and every channel partners. Uh, it's Oriental, uh, the Indoor Institute of Management and Expression, and all of them. You've done an incredible job getting all the uh, great speakers over here and giving me a privilege to speak on this occasion. Let me go ahead and share my presentation. So I'll be doing a presentation for 10 to 12 minutes. I'll try to complete it by 11 minutes. Thank you. Are you able to see my screen? Not now, sir. Are you able to see it right now? Yes, sir. Please make the uh, slideshow, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, I appreciate GP SDS for giving me this great opportunity. So here it is. I'll be speaking about the importance of mental health. And I'll be providing you with these three secrets, especially for the youths. I request all of you to pay complete attention. You need not matter. It need not matter whether you're not able to understand me but just look into the pictures which I have bought for you today. If you get these pictures over here into your subconscious, that's enough. Three books has changed my life. The first book being The Power of Subconscious Mind. The second is Think and Grow Rich. And third is The Morning Miracle. I request all of you to take a screenshot of this book and start implying all the principles in this book. My mantra is change your mindset and change your life. Take consistent action on a daily basis. And my third mantra is keep thinking and focusing on your goals. Because until and unless you have any goals, you'll not be able to proceed further. In today's scenario, because I speak over here in and around Bangalore in Karnataka with the students and universities, and when I meet them one-on-one -on -one or speak to them, they are in a very depressed state, as you can see here. And end of the presentation, you can see the person who practices whatever I'm going to tell you, the three secrets, 
they are going to be charming and enjoying with a powerful vibration. Yes, my dear friends, stress. Each and every person, you ask a small kid going to school, carrying that five kg, 10 kg bag, you just ask him or her, she'll tell, I'm stressed out today, right? So same with the person like us working in this corporate industry. So what is important here is mindset. People keep speaking about it again and again and again. But what is this mindset? Mind is your mind and set is nothing but the collective programs which we have been programmed right from childhood to up to seven to eight years. Our subconscious mind is open. All the, you know, along with the environment and everything goes into your subconscious and your life presently is nothing but 95% of the programming which is done on your subconscious mind. When I was in Burj Khalifa, 2020, February, just before the pandemic, I was in that 124th floor and I was just thinking, how deep is the foundation of this Burj Khalifa, which is a 160 story building? So in the same way, my dear friends, I would want all of you, each one of you, as Dr. Sonakshi rightly said, along with physical, you need to be social too. But here, I want you to focus on your mental health, which is very, very important because it is the foundation of your life. That's the reason Robin Sharma rightly says, the first hour of your morning, it's the golden hour. Please do not you know, barter it with any person on this planet because it's more than anything on this life, okay? There are two minds. One is the conscious mind, which you can see me right now speaking to you. Second is the subconscious mind where all the programming happens and it becomes active during the alpha state, the moment we get up in the morning for 10, 15 minutes, or when you go to sleep, when you're lying in your bed, and you are in that drowsy state, right? That's the time when it gets very, very active. So any goal you want to put into your subconscious, that's the time. I'm not going to speak about all this mindset, the growth mindset, the fixed, productive, defensive, abundance, scarcity, different types of mindset. And as uh, I think um, Dr. Sonashi rightly said, people are getting into this state of mind, depression. They are not able to understand that thin line between sadness and depression. We need to be very alert on this and always try to keep our mind active. There are three ways by which you can you know, change a situation on our first is, can I change it? You need to ask yourself. Every student over here, he or she need to ask, can I change the situation? Second thing, if yes, then how can I change the situation? You need to think about it. And the third thing, if you cannot do anything, you need to keep going, okay? So that the, uh, the road to your life is smoother. If you change your mindset, you have the ability to change the whole world. Okay. The first secret is focus. Now you say, what to focus, sir? What to uh, do? I mean, what we need to do, focus on your goals, time management, your family time, your relaxation time, to-do list, daily action. Because one day, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they were, asked, they were called and they were asked, what is that one thing that made you so successful? And you know, right, you know, right, both of them, they wrote in a small piece of paper, focus. So my dear friends, first and foremost, if you want to excel in your studies, you want to excel in your career, do anything, whatever you want to become, the first secret is focus. The second secret is daily rituals. Yes, my dear friends, it is all simple things I'm telling you, but this is going to, you know, cost you billions. The first and foremost is silence of mind. The moment you get up in the morning, do not rush from your bed. Just sit down in your bed and have some great positive thoughts. Because when you come from that alpha state to your beta state, that five, 10 minutes, the brain rhythm is very slow. And at that time, if you have some positive things going into your subconscious, if you start thinking the same way the whole day goes, it's just like it's being said that, uh, you know, whatever you start in the morning, in the same mood, you know, the whole day passes. So have a lot of gratitude, tons of gratitude in your life for whatever you have. The second uh, ritual, which all of you need to practice is meditation. I had been to Brahma Kumari's institution. It is, it is one of the NGO headquartered in Mount Tabu a couple of years back. I went to, into the, they, are, they have a global hospital and I went into the cardiology department, but they showed me, I could see that people with the right type of uh, exercise, 
with meditation, with good food, and doing all the rituals, their uh, cholesterol level, that is the blockage level, came down from 90% to 30 to 40%. So my dear friends, please do this meditation at least for 20 minutes every single day. You need to do affirmations. I work a lot of, with a lot of students and business professional and working professional on these positive affirmations, especially in the morning hours. You can Google them depending upon what's your challenge. It might be with relationship. It might be with your studies, with your money issues. You have affirmations for everything. So please Google it and try practicing this. The 369 code, very important. Nikola Tesla, who is uh, known as one of the best top most scientists, his 369, there is a you know, depth to that, but the very simple way I can say, you need to have a goal card, whatever your goals are, whatever, just like I want to be an international TEDx speaker by 5th of January, 2024, it's very clear. So I write that goal three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, and nine times before I go to bed. Similarly, you can practice the same. Now, what is a goal card? You say, I, I don't know what is a goal card. Now here, I'm so happy and grateful that I earned three lakh rupees serving six high paying clients, providing three months of one-to-one -one coaching to solve the immediate problem to the earliest. You can use this one of them. Next is visualization, whatever you want to, hold that picture in your mind for 17 seconds continuously and take that image continuously in your mind without any disturbance to 68 seconds. Hold that picture, see yourself, have that, uh, you know, the five senses continuously in more than that, and you will find great things. Just like food is to the body, reading is to your mind. So get into this habit of reading any books, whatever you like, every single day. Journaling, yes. Every single day, my dear friends, you need to journal. Because Dr. Sonakshi did say, I did uh, listen to it, that people are not able to express. It's here, but you cannot express. The reason is when you start writing, you put your thoughts within, along with all the five senses into the book, your thought becomes things. And whenever you put it into your book, it starts doing with images. Remember, your mind understands the language of images. So whenever you put your thoughts into book, the image comes up, whatever it is, and you'll be able to proceed further. So limit your phone usage. <laughs> uh, try to have uh, you know, uh, digital fasting. Like people say, I'm on a fast. That fasting is fine, but digital fasting every single day for 12 to 16 hours a day is a must. 8 p.m. to morning 8 a.m. Do not do, I mean, to say, take the calls or anything like that. If it's urgent, it's fine. Otherwise, restrain from them, okay? Refrain. Secret number three, five things which you require for your brain's optimal performance. First thing is water. Second thing is diet. Third thing is exercise. Very, very important. Today's kids, you know, they have all that burgers and all those things. You do not exercise. What's the use, my dear friends? You need to exercise on a daily basis. Good sleep, very important. Yesterday I was with a, a memory coach who was talking about sleep. Very, very important. Six to eight hours of sleep is a must. Don't compromise on this. If you're compromising on this, you're going against the laws of nature. Oxygen, do breathe. So this is a very important scientific thing. Event plus response is the outcome. Whatever the event, situation happening, and whatever your response, how you respond to it, you will get the response accordingly. Relaxation, this is an important secret. If you don't understand anything what I told you, if you understand this, you're going to win your life. Relaxation, first relax, picturize it clearly, closing your eyes, everything, whatever you want in your life, and you will get the results. There's no way you cannot get it. If you're not getting, you're doing something wrong. And lastly, I would like to give you this one challenge for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Take one thing like uh, meditation or anything and start working on it on a daily basis. And lastly, when you practice all of this or one of these, your life will be you know, from that state to this state. So you'll be enjoying yourself. Lastly, I would say once your mindset changes, everything on the outside start changing along with it by Steve. Thank you very much. I took 11 minutes and 35 seconds. Thank you very much. Over to you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your valuable feedback. Thank you very much. I think uh, we are... Uh, uh, sorry uh, to disturb you, Gurji. Sorry, sorry to uh, disturb you, Gurji. Uh, Pradeep, yes. sir, uh, actually, I forget to capture you. Okay, uh, so please do this gesture. <laughs> yeah. 
डन सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू ओके गुरजीत प्लीज कंटिन्यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू सर सो आई थिंक expressions is contributing towards increasing uh, the uh, uh, education and changing the mindset of young minds young professionals school going students and college going students uh, by teaching them how to uh, speak in english how to learn english so i hope even they'll contribute to your goals and whatever points you have uh, told us thank you so much so moving towards our next guest speaker i would like to invite mr sumanth chinchwadkar So, man, sir, over to you. Let's hear from you. Thank you so much, Gurjit. And I just uh, do a technical check. Am I audible? Uh, is the sound clear to everyone? Yes, yes sir. It's sir. loud right. and clear. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, it's it's been a great privilege to be amongst uh, such uh, uh, accomplished uh, professionals, such wonderful thought leaders. and uh, i'm uh, i'm very glad to be in your company all of you uh, the the kind of topics the kind of themes that we are discussing are uh, quite intertwined with uh, our daily lives the kind of uh, professions that we all are in uh, they are a part of our uh, daily interactions some of them pain us uh, a lot seeing people not falling in, uh, in line and uh, at times uh, this also gives us a great deal of uh, personal and professional satisfaction for having contributed to uh, uh, to their lives in whatever way we we, we could expressions uh, is in this uh, in this whole endeavor of uh, providing uh, not not uh, mental health and mental well being in in the strictest form and sense of the word but surely what we call is uh, a self esteem and uh, ability to live with dignity with uh, the kind of pride that each of us as human beings are are entitled to there are a lot of questions lot of thoughts uh, uh, being put on the table and especially few of them which uh, sonakshi uh, put on the table i uh, have have touched a, a very deep chord uh, with with all of us at expressions because uh, i think uh, we are trying our bit uh, into into helping the young children the teenagers and even in some senses uh, the adult population especially in india to work around uh, those issues uh, of self worth uh, putting expressions uh, developing a mindset that is far more conducive to uh, to expressing oneself in a positive manner so allow me to share my screen i've got a little uh, little presentation or to to talk up uh, to talk to you through uh, as uh, sanakshi also said it is extremely dangerous to provide uh, this uh, free wheeling platform to a teacher and a trainer uh, because he sees uh, the time in terms of hours and days and not in terms of minutes so everybody but i insisted in my team that i must do it through a presentation so i restrict myself to the time given uh, allow me to share my screen please am is the screen visible yes sir so uh, here we are at the global peace and sustainable development summit 2020 mm. as i said i'm extremely glad uh, uh, to be here as a part of the team uh, today we are talking about uh, the third goal of sustainable development good health and well being uh the discussion of my theme uh is not going to be uh that large on a canvas of uh, with that large canvas of uh health uh, and well being on a on a larger scale but i would restrict myself to uh to good health and psychological well being especially in reference to children teenagers and what we call new adults the 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 section of the society which is passing through the teenaging teenage uh, 
age to 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 uh, adulthood and that is where most of the stress today uh, comes with the kind of competitive world uh, with the kind of peer pressure that we are living through and that all with a special reference to communication and language learning my entire uh, field of work is is focused on communication skills and uh, communication skills through a uh, uh, language that may not be uh, essentially a primary language to a learner and to a communicator in india we we live uh, in this strange uh, society in that sense where uh, our primary language uh, is our uh, our mother tongue or otherwise is restricted to a, a certain section of the communication uh, situations but at a larger at, at a different plane be it uh, academic uh, uh, space or be it professional space this shift from primary language to english as being secondary language uh, is is so uh, seamless that our students uh, experience a different kind of uh, emotions and consequences of the smoothness in a in a very very typical uh, fashion and that is what we are working on i am sumant uh, ceo and the co-founder of expressions learning private limited uh, we are uh, edutech company teaching communicative english to those who are not privileged enough to have strong english speaking environment around them and this is most important because india is a aspiring uh, country Uh, the youth at every nook and corner i mean I, i've got uh, students uh, joining me from remote of the uh, villages so to say they aspire to be a global citizen they aspire to be uh, competitive in this uh, in this whole uh, professional world be it from metros of mumbai delhi and calcutta and bangalore uh, to probably the youth from new york and washington yes, uh, around the world and that is what our vision is making english which is i I'll, i'll explain why we chose english to be uh, to be that obvious uh, reasons but that's the key success skills uh, in our society and that is what we are making accessible to these vernacular students allow me uh, a bit of my personal story not uh, for the sake of my gratification but this story is a, is a story of a young boy Um, who experienced this uh, this uh, scenario uh, 50 years back traveled this whole journey uh, of of uh, from a small town boy to a competitive boy at uh, the metro levels and at the semi global level if not global level and uh, what what are what have been the experiences and how these experiences can be prevented uh, from getting filtered down to our next generation is what uh, my uh, my endeavor has been as a professional uh, in this space today i am a teacher and a corporate trainer um, and corporate trainer in the space of communication skills and leadership development that is what today i am in the previous uh, uh, avatar i was a professional manager with uh, multinational companies having done my mba etc etc but most importantly as i said at the start of my journey i was a vernacular language student i i studied in saraswati shishu mandir in in hindi medium school my entire uh, language of uh, communication was hindi when as i grew up i was fortunate to have Uh, at that point of time a social environment where stress of learning uh, secondary language which is uh, of a professional uh, professional language or language of success was not as high but then i did travel that uh, uh, journey at a very late stage today's vernacular students are actually not all that uh, all that lucky today's vernacular students uh, english language is an important skill for them though english language is a language of business profession and language of higher studies which essentially means that english is a uh, as a language of use in adulthood but still unfortunately millions of people in india at least suffer 
uh, vernacular students suffer uh, this this great anxiety because they are pushed into learning english uh, from a very childhood by making it medium of instructions in the schools as doing a bit of a research even within the commonwealth uh, countries leave rest of the countries uh, around india is probably one of the very few countries who has not adopted the primary language or mother tongue as a language of instruction in the schools we have very few countries who have said a foreign language will be a language of instruction in our society that had huge uh, implications in terms of mental health and self uh, self image of a boy that we never could uh, could uh, could uh, could be aware of and that is what sonakshi was uh, uh, was was discussing about i'll take this uh, forward in terms of the trauma of a vernacular student while learning uh, a, a language please realize you are teaching him in a language which is alien to her and that uh, generates a lot of stress of learning she is uh, she is stressed as it is learning new things but when those new things new concepts new uh, subjects new uh, experiences come in a language which is not familiar to her which uh, is not a natural language to her this stress gets uh, gets expanded quite a bit and that is why most our students resort to rote learning see think about it in this fashion uh, i uh, i i teach something to a student in the language that is that she is not so so well versed with it's not her natural language she learns the concept but when it comes to uh, to narrate it to tell it to the uh, to the teacher maybe to write it in a in an examination she is not able to write it with perfection she gets a lesser mark although and that's what sonakshi uh, referred to i know it but i can't uh, uh, i can't express it she, i know it but i can't put it on a piece of paper and that uh, is 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 a time when a when a child of this in this surrounding makes a decision in that sense to not to actually try to learn it it's much easier to uh, mug it up and spew it out on a piece of paper when examination uh, occurs and because the language that she is writing is so much more familiar to the teacher so is so so much more familiar to the examiner that she gets much uh, larger marks much better report card much better percentages in the examination and she is lauded uh, in the peer group so this uh, this child who has actually taken the pain to learn it imbibe it but uh, not got the uh, the reward for it has all the all the motivation to leave that and restore to rote learning but rote learning has a huge uh, amount of uh, of repercussions which neither she at this at uh, this small age is aware nor unfortunately most of the um, professionals or a, or a lot of professionals who are involved in the learning and teaching uh, could pin their point up uh, there the stress of learning places a lot of compromise uh, ends up uh, creating a lot of compromised self esteem i am not good enough i am not a good learner i can't score marks and so on and so forth and that self uh, esteem eventually uh, percolates down to self uh, lack of self confidence and that is from where a lot of, today a lot lot of lot of stress generate why is ha, have you ever stopped and talked about uh, uh, or thought about is uh, the fact that today why are today's kids uh, Uh, depressed at the age of four, uh, at the age of eight, why why are they stressed at the age of five and six and eight? I remember my childhood. I was beaten up. 
I was abused uh, in the play, in a playground field. I was bullied in the classroom, but I would still come back happy and ho gaya, ho gaya. it was a day, it happened to me. So what, a new day and a new fresh start takes place. I was, I had much more uh, self-esteem. I had so much more of self-confidence and it was not given by the tools and techniques of, of science or psychology or, uh, the, uh, or, or some of these external things. It came to me naturally because I grew up with that self-confidence. I grew, it, it was, a, it, it was, I just discovered or I just lived with my natural self-esteem and let natural self-confidence because probably uh, elsewhere I could tell my brain, I could tell my mind and everybody else told my mind that learning, uh, this is a part of the learning and learning is any way self-fulfilling, uh, mm, learning is in any way mm, very, very much of a fun. So let it pass by. That does not happen today because somehow or the other, we've made, uh, mm, made learning a very, very stressful process which otherwise is a very, very fun-filled process. This, uh, all of this ends up creating a loss of opportunities for them. For even a small uh, kid who is self, who has compromised self-esteem or less confidence, she will not participate in the debates. She will not participate in the cultural uh, program in the school. She will not even participate in group discussions and so on and so forth. This lot lack of opportunities grow as we grow up uh, in our life. As we as we uh, grow up, it grows with us uh, in in age and in volume, and that results even uh, loss of opportunities at the employment level. Now, uh, I, I just just uh, uh, focus for two minutes on this rote learning business because that has that has become very very prevalent in most of uh, the developing worlds. And if I, I understand, uh, it is it is equally um, prevalent in other parts of the uh, of, of of the globe. And this rote learning, and that is where I would I would try to deal with those issues that Sunakshi and others have you know, have have raised. This whole uh, whole um, whole phenomenon of rote learning, or whole phenomenon phenomenon of uh, phenomenon of 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 uh, uh, learning being made unnatural results in poor development of five basic process, uh, brain processes, which as an individual forms the core of our being, core of our ability to contribute to uh, the society, and equally important, being able to be astute communicator that we as human beings are defined to be. There is no creature in the world, uh, in this in this entire universe, who is as good a communicator as we humans are. But until and unless we have these five brain processes uh, fully developed, it doesn't happen. The first is information comprehension. We all comprehend information in the uh, language that is familiar to us, in the language that is primary to us. Any information which comes in a secondary language, in a foreign language, which is not fully, we're not fully exposed to, information comprehension itself uh, goes fairly, uh, way, uh, way, uh, way compromised. More than comprehension, whatever little we comprehend, the information processing is, is a second brain uh, process, which is most important after the comprehension and all brain processing happens in our natural language, in our primary language inside our brains. Once, the, once we do the processing, the information assimilation starts. What, what we say is in uh, acquired uh, experiences and what we call as uh, our memories, uh, which result into various uh, uh, behavioral issues as well as character issues is happens because of this information assimilation and then drawing inferences. This, all these four processes and the last of course, the structuring of self-constructed thoughts. 
is is a is is a uh, all these all these five uh, processes are essentially um, a factor of uh, of primary language of a uh, of a natural language uh, in the child if the child is not able to get information in his uh, familiar language uh, information processing won't happen assimilation won't happen inferences won't be drawn and forget about being able to structure and that is precisely from where that thought comes mujhe aata sab kuch hai i can't uh, uh, i can't communicate with that i know everything i know how am i feeling but i can't put it across i know uh, the subject and the mm, thought but i am not able to communicate that is where structuring uh, is uh, uh, structuring issues come and that is because we are not used to uh, or we don't have information we don't process it in our uh, in our natural language early age practice of learning essentially therefore uh, results into loss of learnability in adulthood and this is this is the uh, so far the learnability was not a big play in the picture and therefore we didn't get uh, such a such a expanded or such a aggravated um, consequences of this practice of rote, rote learning this loss of learning learnability is all about those five uh, process, brain processes loss of learnability in digital economy means a whole lot different ball game please realize in the digital economy we are living through a phase where every second year we have to new uh, learn new skills yesterday it was php and java today it is java beans uh, tomorrow it's going to be machine learning and ai and uh, emotional coefficient and so on and so forth there's so much more of change that is happening around us that if we have as as adults if we have to survive if we have to grow if we have to feel meaningful and be a participant in this society learning new skills is important and if learn a loss of learnability just would not be uh, would not take us anywhere and loss or not being able to learn new skills eventually would uh, end would would result into unemployment and poor paying jobs and that is what is happening to the most part of uh, indian youth today we have the largest number of graduates and engineering graduates in the world still they are not able to find right kind of employment because their learnability is so much more compromised and poor in employment poor paying jobs eventually would say have lifelong consequences of self doubt uh, stress and so on and so forth that's where i would conclude the right approach to learning language will lead to a stress free early age learning and poor development and and stop proper or uh, result into proper development of brain, brain processes which in turn will build desired learnability by the time students uh, get attain their adulthood this will give them this this uh, learnability alone can give them access to good jobs and adequate income to lead a secure respectable life ensuring long term good to good mental health and physical health not for only for themselves but for uh, their uh, their families and for the people around them thank you so much i hope i have been able to kind of contribute to the thought that is uh, that is being on the table thank you so much for giving me a patience learning over to over to you gurjeet thank you thank you so much sir your experience of being a vernacular students has given expressions the right approach to teach our students uh, speaking english in a very easy and interesting way thank you so much for your contribution sir gurjeet you are on mute okay sorry really sorry so moving towards our next guest i would like to invite madam tiana jones from united states over to you ma'am if you are here thank you so much for having me today i am very grateful to be here 
Through evolution, it's time to understand for sustainable health and well being, we all must accept God's existence with an abundance of light that shines inside of us all. This will help decrease mental and physical illnesses that occur in the body due to your mantra egos that can occur inside of you. This is a way of knowing the acceptance of how to overcome all illnesses. It is now that the evolution has taken over during pandemic of COVID-19 due to people being inside their homes and also having distress from being around people they don't know, wondering if they have a virus or not. Now is the time to accept that we are all with God and we are all living in with peace and we can overcome any life circumstance of this illness of mental and physical. Now, with the understanding of the light that exists within us, we can all see the light to the end of the tunnel of worries, of distress, of wonder, of any type of anxiety and any type of depression that may lead to physical illnesses or even something worse off. It is within to understand that many people can take hold of the accountability of what is going on in their thought process with their minds and trying to see what really is going on around us. Take hold of your understanding. It is now the time during our world that we must understand that God does exist within anatomy. God does exist within all living life. Now is the time to know the truth and anything is possible and anyone can overcome anything that has happened to them in their life. Knowing this information, we are due to find out more discoveries as time goes by within science, within technology, within development for all people to know that their faith and their hope can help bring them out of any distress and discomfort. Please understand that all people do exist with God and all people do exist with a higher power that can help them and heal them from any virus or any misunfortunate events in their life. Any life circumstances can be a traumatic distress to help you learn from the accountabilities and go from there to learn that anything is possible. You are all loved by God and you all are due to have peace within. You must take hold of your emotions and your mindsets now more than ever to see that God exists within the living. All lives do exist and women's lives do exist with God, with a higher power of light and love. You can overcome anything. Just stay true to yourselves and God will always be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Rightly said by you that faith and hope can bring out, bring out us from any circumstances. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll move ahead with our next guest speaker of the day. I would like to invite Ms. Abha Monde to hear from, uh, I would like to invite Ms. Abha Monde. Abha ma'am, if you are here, over to you Abha ma'am. Yes, I'm very much here. Yes, Devendra, thank you. Please uh, start the uh, PPT. Are you able to see the screen? Not yet, ma'am.
Devin, let me play it. Devin, I'll, I'll do it. Devendra, am I audible? I am playing my screen, my uh, my PPT. Please uh, don't share it. Abha ma'am, uh, please make the slide show. Yeah. Okay. That's great. You are on mute, Abha. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. And my screen is... Uh, uh, it's visible. Uh, PPT is visible, correct? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, thank you very much. Um, I am Abha, uh, and Namaste from India. Uh, today I'm presenting my topic is um, English and well-being. Um, challenge. My, my slide is moving, correct? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. I don't understand what is happening here. Yes, ma'am, your slide is moving. Okay, thank you. So, uh, English and well being uh, is actually connected in both the directions. Those who know English communication have uh, better opportunities, good self esteem. Uh, and if one wants to have a relaxed life without any anxiety, in India especially, she or he must learn uh, to communicate in English. Uh, India has a different history as, uh, as compared to uh, other, uh, other countries because um, it did not arrive in India as a foreign language of hobby, but the, as the language of British Empire. It became the language of elites and remained so for almost seven to eight decades. Uh, uh, remained uh, almost for 200 years. And it became the language of elite for almost seven to eight decades till the mushroomed growth of English medium schools happened in India. So uh, I'm delighted to participate in this uh, Global uh, Peace Summit uh, as an, uh, and Sustainable Development Summit. The summit is happening actually at a time where the world is still uh, struggling to come over the pandemic and uh, its social, psychological, and economic if effect. India being the largest democracy with all its vividness, variety, and social milieu, it has its own challenges to complete the, uh, the goal, UN goal of good health and well-being. Just a second. <clears throat> So, um, uh, today's session, we have seen a lot of insightful, uh, insightful points and tips on uh, mental uh, and physical uh, well-being, 
Dr. Sonakshi, Mr. Shetty, Anita Powell, all have shared very practical approach uh, uh, to, to this uh, particular topic. For me, uh, I will be concentrating very much on communication, that is English communication and well-being. Uh, for me, this, this particular topic is very near to heart because I have been teaching English since 1996 and have seen the, uh, seen the problem that despite being English medium students, most of the students are not able to communicate properly in English. So, um, as I said earlier, that English has a different history in India. And it is important to know the background, this background, because then only we will be able to understand the psychological pressure that it has on suburban tier two and tier three city students. So the student uh, who live or who remain in uh, tier two and tier three cities are actually those who either do not have, um, either do not have the educational or monetary capacity to go to the big universities or big cities, or these students come to tier two and tier three cities because these are only their dean cities as they are coming from villages or block level, very small places. So the students, these students who come to uh, come to tier two and tier three cities are either first or second generation graduates. Their parents are still in the farming industry, uh, farming or industry worker with no skill capacity. And when we talk about the girls of this area, they are oppressed that are on the, on the uh, mercy of, uh, if I say on the mercy of paternal society, whatever their father, their bro yeah, older brother say is the, the word for them. So, uh, all this background actually um, makes them, as Suman sir used the word trauma, uh, it, is, it is really difficult for these students to vocalize their thoughts, even in their own languages, leave aside English. Leave aside, uh, leave aside English. So the, uh, the challenge is these, uh, these kids, these students have come to the colleges of comparatively bigger cities where most of the things are taught in English. The job uh, interview requires communication in English because most of the interviews happen in English. So they are, they are not able to communicate. But the good part is they are not totally naive, totally blank as far as English communication is concerned. The new technology, the new society has uh, given them the opportunity to get words. So, you know, they know little nouns. They know they use a lot of English words in their daily life. But they are not able to put their thought, as Sumant uh, said, and well, Dr. Sonakshi also said, their, uh, their brain is working but they are not able to produce their thought in English. So according to uh, my experience and in last uh, 20, 30 years of my teaching, I have understood and seen that all students, all students possess at least 100 English words. So if anyone has 100 English words, it's actually enough to start speaking English, speaking in English. But it does not happen because of lack, sorry, lack of confidence. And if, if I talk about last uh, three years, the students I have uh, around one, uh, 1,150 students, many of these belong to very small town, uh, smaller towns of Madhya Pradesh uh, around Indore, Bhopal, Ujjain, Devas, Shajapur, Agar, Malwa. These students are going to college, they want to perform better in different uh, areas of their life, they want to crack interviews in, uh, in companies, but do not have confidence, do not have courage to get out and 
uh, and speak. So they, they, their challenge is anxiety, pressure, and fear of speaking English. And that is why Expressions has created um, a program where we give them mental and educational support. If when I say mental support, we, uh, uh, we, we create a family atmosphere. We are connected to each and every student of, uh, of, uh, of the centers uh, uh, around Indore. So connecting them and giving them motivation wherever they are lacking is actually the key that after completing or during the course, uh, course program, they are able to reduce their anxiety, reduce the fear of speaking English. And the personality development uh, sessions, um, uh, different kind of uh, uh, interview uh, tips, then a lot of small sessions on grooming, on, on uh, keeping yourself good, um, how to behave uh, in, in a corporate world. This entire uh, group of, of training, this entire section of training makes them little confident to face the world outside their small village. So uh, uh, last, before the pandemic started, actually 2020 was the worst year for India as far as suicidal cases are concerned. It has the highest number of suicidal cases in the last uh, decade. So I'm not saying that many of them have committed suicide because they were not able, they were, they were not able to speak or communicate. But yes, the confidence level, the, the courage to face the world was that. So if we at Expressions are able to, to bring, the, bring the students um, to a point where they feel confident, their self-esteem is higher, where when they have courage to come up and express their um, thoughts, uh, after some time, you, you will be uh, listening to some very young students who have been with us for almost last uh, three, four months. And these are the students who have um, won over the fear of speaking English. And they will be presenting today in front of you, in front of all international audience in English. And that is very much pride. That is very uh, del that is very uh, uh, boosting for me as a teacher that my uh, team is able to perform, my team is able to bring them out of the shell of their fear, anxiety, and uh, challenge of facing the world. Thank you very much. I hope uh, that, uh, that my uh, talk was insightful enough. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abha ma'am, for your insightful thoughts and your valuable time. Thank you very much. Gurjeet, uh, I would like to request uh, that uh, actually we have a guest, uh, guest okay. speaker from the uh, USA. And actually in the USA, there is a midnight. So she is waiting. So first, uh, okay. I would like to have uh, that speaker. Uh, Ismaili, are you there? Yes, Smiley. Yes. yes, yes, Smiley. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Gurjeet, uh, please introduce uh, Smiley Ghushal, ma'am. It's it's my pleasure to uh, introduce a uh, uh, Smiley, ma'am, from United States, our guest speaker. So, over to you, Smiley, ma'am. Hi, it's it's so good, and thanks. You know, Dr. Supriya for inviting me as always, igniting and always ready to ignite the platform. Well, uh, today's topic is pretty much, you know, very, very um, interesting. And uh, I would like to, you know, highlight, share my viewpoints, how 
well-being is relating to nature. And how does nature impact our well-being? Now, I mean, there could be many questions which have been, you know, answered or being taken over, but these are some of my viewpoints as a green initiative leader and a green icon. I would like to highlight on well-being relating to nature. Now, exposure to nature not only makes us feel, you know, better emotionally, it contributes to our physical wellness, reducing many illness. And those are pretty much like blood pressure. You talk about muscle tension. Most important is the stress and mental illness. Even medical science have proven the fact that treating patients with natural therapy has shown remarkably fast recovery in patients. That's what is nature. In this fast moving world, we all are in human race and so much obsessed with branded materialistic consumerism. The fact that nature has given us everything in abundance and we are in nature. Why aren't we taking, be wise enough to take things up from the nature? Show respect towards nature and accept the fact that like as in Ayurveda, we always say, and there is a saying that every illness has solution in nature, but we are overlooking with all those. We are in human race. We are competing. And in that human race, we are all under stress, mental tension, so many things. We have to act wise. We are all in this world. We have to act responsibly. How we can do that? People say it's impossible. No, there is nothing impossible. It's just our mindset. And see things and accept the fact that what is available in and around us. That is, I would rather say, nature. Nature, looking at nature, spending time in natural environment can benefit and uplift our mood. Mood swings, hormonal imbalance, as we do meditation, yoga, everything, but we do it in indoor. Why can't we do it outdoor? The effect of doing outdoor exercise, meditation, yoga gives double impact but we are so much in the comfort zone that we are not accepting the fact. It's our health. If we are in good health, we are giving to the world. We are standing to inspire our young masterminds. And that is my focus. Now studies you know, have proven the sense of well-being. So many disease, and nowadays, most of the wellness and medical centers are practicing natural therapy. As a certified aromatherapist, number of natural blends are used for many, many illness. And I would recommend everyone to have natural blends to stay healthy at their home. There are few takeaways, few steps. I can definitely mention here for everyone to walk with me to live healthy. Let's talk about simple steps. It's recommended that 120 minutes a week spending in the nature, no matter what you do, it uplifts your well-being, whether it's relating to your health, health 
illness whatsoever. Number two, brisk walk. Do meditation and yoga in nature. Then we can remain focused, thinking that nature, respect nature, you know, that organic way always heals us from inside. That is so important. It's only our mindset. If we have all these, you see the wonders how healthy we live. As again, as I say, standing as a sustainable earth ambassador, it's my mission to bring nature back to every, every human life. And we, we can cherish in decades. And we stand as a role model. We don't think that others will do it, will fall. No, let's the change be the answer. Let's be the change maker to see the change and the change in the world around us. Because we have to do things the way we would like because we have to have the vision in our mind to stay healthy. Health is wealth. Do we accept that? It's in our hand. Respect human being, respect nature. It is so good blend and bundle of gratitude and humbleness. If we follow these, I'm sure, we all will live a better, healthy life. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I would encourage, recommend, suggest, let's respect nature, take things from nature. Let's not compete, have the sense of humbleness, gratitude, because we are all in this world and we have to make this world a better place and be a change maker to see the world change around by naturally staying healthy. Last but not the least, I know a lot of speakers in and around, but I can go on and on. But as we all say that we need to fasten our seat belt to have a healthy and a safe journey. Let's fasten our seat belt to res respecting nature, gifting plants. There are positive plants, air purifying plants, simple. Let's have them because plants gives us all the positive energy. See, nature has given us so many things. And that nature, we are not respecting. Let's do that. Let's come unitedly and help to preserve our motherland, Mother Earth, and live happy, safe, and healthy, and with positivity. I'm sure I could enlighten or ignite a little bit from bottom of my heart. Much love and gratitude from Ambassador Smiley all the way from Dallas. Stay happy, stay safe, in good health, naturally. Dear Smiley, I need your uh, picture with doing this gesture. <laughs> yeah, that's great, that's great. One of the best picture of today's session. Oh, I am always being blessed by all of you. You all are amazing. Again, from bottom of my heart, thank you so much for giving me this platform. If I can add value, I will keep on with my mission. Come and support. Let's grow together and make a better place. Thank you. Stay blessed. Thank you, dear. Gurdjieff, ma'am, uh, please proceed. Gurjeet ma'am, are you there? Please unmute Gurjeet ma'am. 
Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Please make me the co-host so that I can do it myself. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you for the enlightening, enlightening speech, uh, Smiley Ma'am. Thank you so much. So now I would like to invite our next guest speaker, Mr. Uh, Cliff Gurjeet, uh, Yeah, Gurjeet, yeah. Actually, uh, we have another speaker from the land of the okay. USA. Uh, Miss Linda is uh, here. So can okay. we invite her? Sure, sure. So I would uh, like to invite our next guest speaker, Miss Linda Tilson. Linda, ma'am, if you're here from United States, over to you, Linda, ma'am. Thank you so much. I want to extend a warm welcome to Witty Gossip for encouraging me to share with everyone today. And so what we're gonna do is today, I'm gonna explore with all of you why I think boundaries are essential for good health and well-being, and why I think the value of communicating them is undervalued. Most of us would agree that it is relatively easy to spot the physical signs of good health. However, when it comes to well-being, we are challenged to understand how people can change their behaviors and thinking patterns to achieve their desired goals. I honestly wished someone had taken the time to sit down with me to share this sooner. It's in my work where I serve as a beacon of hope when it comes to guiding individuals to move through adversity into resiliency. During my interactions with others, I discovered that in our effort to be acknowledged, accepted and find belonging, we often are reluctant to step into our power of really being who we are. Before now, it never occurred to me that boundaries are what you set as your very first step in each new relationship that you create with another person. For just a minute, I want you to think about a time when you were having a conversation with someone and you, for many reasons, did not share with the other person what you value most in your relationships. Like most of us, you likely placed importance on maintaining harmony and avoiding conflict when in the presence of another person. Furthermore, while we all know when someone is not treating us with respect, we should always speak up. However, we often hold back because it's easier to let things go than to confront the other person. I would like to you to pause for a moment and think about what might happen when we do the inner work in a way that we get to know ourselves well enough to, to honestly convey who we are and what we value to another person? I invite you to step away from fear and imagine the best thing that could happen when we effectively communicate our boundaries to another person. What might this look like to you? Well, today I happen to have a five honor five-step honor system that you can use to guide you through this process. And so the first one is know your rights. I have the right to ask for my needs to be met. Number two, define your core values. Mine happen to be reciprocity, respect, and honesty. Number three, set your boundaries using your core values. One way you might do this will be this. I will allow individuals to be honest with me. I will not allow someone to show disrespect toward me. I will accept varying frequencies of reciprocity. Number four, communicate your boundaries using I statements. I want us to each be honest with each other in our relationship. Since respect is one of my core values, I want us to share what it means to respect each other. If one of us is disrespectful, I want us to have an open, honest conversation to resolve it. My relationships are important to me, so I want each of us to be comfortable being our best selves around each other. And lastly, which is number five and one of the hardest, I think, to activate is maintaining your boundaries by remembering to refer to your core values during your conversations. And it might look something like this. I value my relationship with you. When you cancel our plans last minute so you can do something else, I feel like you don't want to spend time with me. Is there a way we can make plans that will help you avoid last minute cancellations? Now that I've shared a practical way for you to set, communicate, and maintain your boundaries, 
you can use this skill to effectively strengthen your relationships during good times and be able to move easily during not so good times. You can even take this one step further by thinking about how you might approach this with someone you've never met and with someone you've known for a while. The great thing is, then you get to decide what might be the best way to communicate your boundaries so you each can get what you want, need, and desire from the relationship. And the reason why I'm sharing all of this today is because I really wanted to give everyone an actionable tool that they could use to improve their relationships. And this is because I used to think that setting and communicating boundaries was a way of creating safety during times of conflict. However, what I've come to realize over the years and understand fully is that boundaries do much more. They serve the purpose of creating a vulnerability that enhances the quality of relationship, one where each person gives space to the other to thrive. And so this, my friends, is what I offer for all of you. I promise you that all of your relationships will become fulfilling and mutually accepting the moment that you take this tool and apply it to your life. And so I invite you to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. We feel fortunate to have you with us and share your views with us. Thank you so much. Uh, Linda, thank you. thank you very much uh, to have you. Uh, can we have a, 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 a picture? Linda, are you there? I am. Do you yes. see me? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. It's a very nice. And actually, Linda, we, uh, Witty Gossip a team, uh, actually wants to say that, yeah, uh, we are very honored, we are very humbled to have you in this global platform. Thank you very much, dear, for participating. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Gurjeet, ma'am, please proceed with the next speaker, according to the agenda, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So I would like to invite our guest, uh, next guest speaker, Mr. Cliff Ransom from Philippines. Cliff, sir, over to you. Okay, hello. A pleasant day to everyone. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. You're clearly audible. That's great. Please allow me to share my screen now. I hope everybody can see it. Is that clear to everybody? Yes, it's visible now, sir. Okay, wonderful. First of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Weedy Gossip Association, all the, the organizers and the staff, and for all the excellent speeches that I have been hearing since the start of this sustainable development goal number three. And I am very blessed to have been invited, and I hope that with the time that has been given to all of us, I'll be able to give a piece of my thoughts as well as a piece of my mind regarding this topic. So without further ado, I'd like to go straight to this one. We know that the United Nations has actually an overarching vision that includes people all throughout the planet, all throughout the globe. Now, it's so easy to say that we have to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages, meaning regardless of whether we are young or old, whether whatever race or, or gender or status we come from, this is a specific goal that focuses on healthy lives and well-being of people. Earlier, we heard our outstanding resource speakers talk about the importance of a healthy mindset together with a healthy body. And I'd like to continue on with a trail of thought or thinking by as much as possible, focusing on the fundamentals this time. Now, just a short review. We know that number three actually gives us hope. It is possible, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, to win the fight against almost every disease. It is possible. The new goal for worldwide good health promotes healthy lifestyles, preventive measures, and modern, efficient healthcare for everyone. We know that for the past couple of years, the COVID-19 pandemic has really changed the landscape of all people, in particular when it comes to health. 
And sad to say, just like what we heard earlier, people have become suspicious of one another if that person is carrying a certain disease or not. And that is sad because that was not heard of in the past. We, we hug each other, we embrace each other, we shake hands, and there was no such thing as physical or social distancing in the past. And so in this case here, in order for us to ensure that healthy life and promote that well-being, then let's go back to the basics. And that is really my goal for this, for this day or for this afternoon. We have heard of the universal motto or adage that health is wealth. And everybody, I am sure, agrees to that. Now, what do we do with wealth if we have wealth? Well, of course, we keep that wealth, don't we? We cherish that wealth. And we also, to a certain degree, share that wealth. So that is why today my talk will revolve around the seven laws of radiant health as a preventive measure against illness. So I've taken this one from the Ambassador College uh, Press in 1997, and it's still true up to now. It's a classic uh, textbook, if I may say, or a brochure that guides everybody. So I'll give credit to whom credit is due. I'll just expand on the thoughts that what have been outlined here. We know that a law is fixed. It is stable, just like the laws of physics the law of gravity. Wherever we are, we may be up there in the Scandinavian countries, or we may be in South America, or in Asia, or in Africa, or in North America, the law of gravity is applicable to everybody. Same with the laws of radiant health. So I'll go straight here. First is proper food and diet. Proper food and diet. At least 90% of all sickness and disease is either directly or indirectly related to what we eat. If we are what we think, then we are also what we eat. Do we agree, ladies and gentlemen? We are what we eat. And of course, what we eat, our diet, our food will affect the way we behave, the way we conduct our lives, the way we actually exercise and everything. This may be so basic, all right? But this is extremely important. It's vital because there are many countries belonging to the global south that do not enjoy this. If we belong to the global north countries, then we may take this for granted because we always have food inside a refrigerator, right? We have all the delicious food and the healthy and nutritious foods. But how about these other countries? that do not have access to such. That's why the United Nations is also thinking of these people. Sickness and disease can be prevented if there is proper food and diet. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but that is the point here. We have to say it so that we can take action. Is this sustainable? Let's find out later on. Next one, cleanliness and dress. How many, how many governments emphasize cleanliness and dress? Proper and regular bathing, for example, wearing of clean clothes, they absolutely contribute not only to a clean physical body, but also protects us from disease carriers. That is just a basic fact. That's why I said I go back to the basics. I go back to the fundamentals before we actually expand on other thoughts, on other mindsets, on other thinking. Cleanliness and dress. How about we emphasize to our students, right? I'm a professor. I've been teaching for 20 years already. And I know that many of these students and pupils of mine also came from far-flung areas where there is little access to clean and potable water. Right? I'm not judging them. I love these students, and I know that you do. We all do, don't we? These are people, and I don't care what race they come from. For me, every time I look at a child, I look at a creation and image of God with a great potential to be a leader one day. That's why we teach them, we help them, so that such things like diseases will be prevented. Okay? 
Let me proceed. Third, sunshine and fresh air. Well, we heard about connecting with nature earlier, right? Ma'am Smiley provided the perfect springboard for me to connect this one. Where do we have sunshine and fresh air? Well, nature has that in abundance and it's free, right? We don't have to pay for that. We go to a certain place, a province, a rural setting. But many people right now, especially if we live in, in, in big cities, we are affected by the hustle and bustle of city life, are we not, right? Most take in enough air to sustain life, but not enough to live it vigorously. We need sunshine. We need fresh air. The vitamin D that we take, the oxygen that we take, these are so basic, but they will definitely affect the way we behave, the way we talk, the way we conduct our lives. And that is, again, a basic fact. It's a law. Wherever we are inside this planet, we all need sunshine and fresh air. That's just a law that transcends every other laws. And we know that is the truth. Let me proceed to the fourth one. Another thing is exercise, right? We heard about brisk walking earlier. Exercise, of course, exercise, exercising every day is not practical, right? But at least we exercise twice or three times a week. We know we are all busy. But if we squeeze in this very important law, then we are building a strong, supple, graceful body. It requires effort, doesn't it? Of course it does. That's why this is also emphasized. We've got PE, physical uh, education subjects, don't we? Because we know the importance of physical health. We know the importance of having a strong body, a strong citizenry in, in a country means a strong country, right? The less sickness, the less illness among people, then the better for governments to actually focus or, or alter or, did, or make sure that these resources will be channeled in other directions instead of always paying for paying the bills for hospitals and for sickness and illnesses. If these are prevented, if this is greatly reduced, then the government can make use of the money in other purposes, for other purposes, can allocate that in other purposes, okay? Next one is another law is extremely important, sleep and rest. For those of us who are working, I am sure you would agree that we, especially us professionals, we need sleep and rest, don't we? Have we ever noticed someone who, has, who hasn't slept well, they would say, I'm sorry, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, right? But it doesn't have to be that way. The more we are able to have seven to eight hours of sleep and rest, the better we perform. We can perform at peak performance, as they say. We can do and achieve peak performance. Depriving sufficient sleep and rest will accomplish not more, but less in the end. And we get irritable, don't we? We get annoyed easily, especially if we lack sleep. And our relationships with people get affected. Why? Because we are irritable. We get annoyed so quickly. But the cause, one of the causes is actually because we didn't sleep well the other night. That's why we feel groggy, right? We feel annoyed easily. That's why it's a law. We all need this one, okay? I still have some time. Next, second to the last law of radiant health. Take note, it's radiant health. It's health that radiates, that shines. Next, of course, we have to avoid bodily injury. We have to use wisdom. Is this exercise good for me at this age, right? So we also have to use wisdom because we might injure ourselves. Some exercises are not just tailored fit for our bodies. Let's accept that. Maybe a slight brisk walk will do or just walking will do compared to running or jogging, right? Or maybe swimming, right? It may be applicable to one but may not be relevant for another person. That's why we also have to use wisdom and counsel. We have to counsel, ask advice. 
should I do this kind of sports? Will this be good for me or will I just be breaking my bones? Okay, <laughs> I'm being very frank. That's why we have to avoid bodily injury. One careless moment, ladies and gentlemen, can ruin our health and physical well-being. I know of someone who went to the gym, right? He, he didn't have any warm-ups. This is true. This is true to life story. He did not have any warm-ups. He immediately had 50 kilograms, okay, of, of, of those exercises inside the gym carrying, I think it was bench press that he did. You know what? His bones were broken. It's terrible. That's avoiding bodily injury. It's a law that we have to always remember. And we tell our students, don't do that kind of exercise. You did not have any warm up. Be very careful. Athletes know that. Basketball players know that. They just don't go into sports without doing warm ups, right? And I know we are aware of that we, wherever we may be. And that just makes sense. Okay. I still have around four minutes left. Seventh law of radiant health building a positive mental attitude. We had this earlier, right? Do your best to overcome thoughts of hate, strife, and worry. This is also very important. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, the healthier our bodies are, the better we can think. Have you ever noticed that? If, you, if you're healthy, you feel good, right? When you feel good, you are able to accomplish many things. You're able to focus. You're able to concentrate. Why? Because you feel so healthy. What I do before, before I teach, sometimes I would have 10 to 20 push-ups. Sometimes I would just have, I would do jumping jacks. Anything that would help me sweat out a little. And then all throughout the day, I would have a positive mental attitude because I feel good physically. So again, it has an impact on the way I think. And I'm sure you were able to do that. Plus, there are numerous researches that show that once we apply these laws of good health, we will always have that positive mindset that we are all aiming for, that we try to achieve. That's why I said I go back to the basics, because these basics are so essential to each one of us, helping us. Nature is one, okay? So in summary, the first law is the proper food and diet, followed by cleanliness and dress, sunshine and fresh air, exercise, sleep and rest, avoiding bodily injury, building positive mental attitude. These are very basic steps to radiant health. But once these are emphasized by governments of each country, then the United Nations will have reached its goal. These may be so specific, but what if every person tries to apply this in his or her life? Imagine what kind of world will we live in? What kind of country will we live in? What kind of Philippines? What kind of India? What kind of United States of America? What kind of Kenya will that be? Right? What is the big picture, ladies and gentlemen? An overall good health is vital, okay? The word vital comes from the Latin word vita, life. Vital for esteem and image. When we feel good, our self-esteem and self-confidence is raised on a higher level. Our image becomes better. Or in short, an overall good health focuses on human happiness. That's why it's critical. It's crucial. So. I'd like to thank everybody, especially the organization for giving me this platform to be able to share my thoughts. And I know that all of you still have other things to say and add to what I have just shared. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your insightful pre presentation and specific and informative pointers. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank dear, uh, dear Cliff, uh, actually your presentation was very good, very informative and most relevant. 
So uh, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much. I would like to, yeah, I would like to capture you. Please do this. Yes, uh, Gurjeet, please move ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. So moving ahead with the next speaker, I would like to invite Ms. Bharti Kakwani, ma'am. Bharti, ma'am, over to you. From India. Bharti, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before, uh, yeah, before having the presentation of Bharti, ma'am, I would like to request all the guest speakers. Actually, uh, we have also the students who are uh, waiting uh, to deliver their presentations and their talks. So please uh, make sure about the time limit because if you are crossing the time limit, so you are you wouldn't able to uh, receive the award uh, for the best presentation and for the best award. Yeah. Okay, Bharti ma'am, please proceed. So thank you, first of all, Supriya ma'am and Gurjeet ma'am for inviting me. And thank you, Viti Gossip and everyone present over here, those who are putting their efforts in this direction to make this planet a better place to live. So here's my brief introduction. I'm Bharti Kakwani. I'm an educationist. I have done BA, MA, and MA, BA in English literature. I have 12 years of experience as a principal corporate trainer. I teach competitive English and communicative English as well. I have been a part of Expressions Resources Private Limited since long. And today I'll be putting my uh, views about third goal of sustainable development, good health, and well being. So I would like to connect it with education as I feel education has a power to awaken the people about health and the health policies which governments are bringing. Actually in India as well and in other countries as well, government brings a lot of policies for the betterment and for the health of people. But no one pays attention because people doesn't know about it. So through education system, through schools, through colleges, we can bring that policies in front of normal people, in front of common people so that they can avail benefit of that policies we can give them the way and means to reach out to these facilities. They even don't know how to use it. Even now, if we go to COVID vaccine, nowadays everyone is get vaccinated. But in remote areas, people doesn't know how to go for that, how to enroll, how to register, because it is online. So we can help them to register in it. We can guide them, even people get afraid what will happen if I'll get vaccinated, I'll get fever, I'll get pain in body and lots of other um, things are there in their mind. So that has to be removed by education only. We have to bring awareness on the level of block and panchayat because in cities and big cities and metro cities already everyone is aware. They don't need awareness about health and hygiene, but still in block and panchayat level, it is needed. If I take example of Indore, they are in India, they are already um, aware about cleanliness, about hygiene, because if we are keeping cleanliness, if we are keeping hygiene, then only we will be healthy enough. But at village level, right now I'm in a village named Kamlapur, people are still unaware about the cleanliness. They throw garbage here and there without any use. So we have to be active, we have to focus on educating people because education develops the skills, values, and attitude that enable citizens to lead healthy and fulfilled lives. We make them inform decisions and respond to local and global challenges which we are facing right now. Since well-being has many faces, improving students' well-being in schools, we require a whole school approach. It means it is not only a school um, responsibility to aware, teachers and parents both have to connect. It happens, like sometimes teachers are also like, we just have to teach, come in the class, teach and go. No, it is about that we are here because we have to, you know, um, we have to develop a good society. We have to create a future. And we cannot create future only by teaching them. We have to teach them each and every single thing, including moral values, including health and hygiene. COVID has taught us that only health matters. 
If we are healthy, then only we can do anything. So in addition to this health, I would like to add that good health must include mental well-being, especially in case of children, because they are our future. Mentally healthy during childhood means reaching development and emotional milestone and learning healthy social skills and how to cope up with the problems. I have seen students like um, they are those who are just in six or seven, they say I'm going in a depression. Means they, they, when we were child, we were not knowing even the meaning of depression, what it, it, it is, being in class six or seven. So we have to focus that our child should mentally healthy. Although nowadays schools are having counselors, but it is not enough. Every individual belong to school, every individual belong to their home, must have to focus on their mental health. Because mental health is not simply the absence of a mental disorder. Children do don't, who don't have a mental disorder might offer in how well they are doing. And children have the same diagnosed mental disorder might differ in their strength and weakness. Maybe someone who is in depression, they speak a lot. The other one who is in depression doesn't speak at all. So they must have a different identification, which being a teacher, being a parent, we have to identify and we have to work for that. Because mental health and well-being are more than absence of mental illness. Mental health is a state of well-being where people can meet their learning potential, cope up with normal stress and are connected to the community and friends. Nowadays, students cannot handle stress at all. Even if they don't get good marks in class 10 or even in 8, they get suicide. It is quite easy for them to quit. Even I saw students in class 6 or 7, they just say, I'm fed up of my life. I don't have anything to do. No one listen to me. I should suicide. So we have to work on their mental being. We have to change their mindset. Although over the last 15 years, the number of childhood death has been cut in half, but our, then too, we have to promote good health. We have to promote healthy lifestyle. We have to prevent measures and modern efficient healthcare for everyone. We have to focus on inculcating good habits related to health and hygiene in children at the school level only. And we have to provide a safe and secure and most importantly, friendly environment to the children to make sure that no single child should face any sort of mental disorder or health issues. If we are not friendly to them, they do not share. I would like to share an incident here. One of my students got her periods first time. She was not knowing about it. She was not even aware about it. No one at home told her. And she started crying a lot like hell. Other students came to me and said, ma'am, she's crying badly. And then when I went to her, I discussed with her, I make her calm. And then she shared everything with me. And uh, I tell everything to her about uh, this uh, circle. And then she was okay. What if she students will not get proper knowledge? Children will not get proper knowledge. See, nowadays we say that our children are going in a wrong direction. They are getting involved with others. This is because we are not giving them right education. They are mentally not strong. They want any support, someone to listen. So we should pay attention that we should have enough time, not only to teach, but to listen to our students much. It is not about 40 minutes lecture that you have to go and take a lecture. No, you have to focus a lot on their mental well-being. You have to listen them carefully. That is what important. You have to see whether they are in a men good mental health or not. And I feel mental health comes with good thoughts. And that is why I always say affirmation matters a lot. And I... This is affirmation which I use every day. Then when I wake up, I'm possibility positive. I'm healthy, wealthy, fit and fine. So the more you say it, the more you feel like you are healthy, you are wealthy. It happens like, see, if Gurjeet mom has a bad mood, I suppose, it, just suppose, and if she's uh, dressing in a very good way, and if I'll say, hey, Gurjeet mom, you're looking beautiful today. Won't she smile? Of course she will. She will give a great smile and her mood will also blossom. So every time, whenever you will have positive thought, 
you will feel positive you will feel healthy you will feel fit and fine so say it again and again to yourself that i am positively positive i am healthy i am wealthy i am fit and i am fine so let's work together to make this word happy and healthy thank you thank, thank you, you so much ma'am and thank you everyone for listening thank you thank you so I much bharti ma'am i hope it was short yeah it was <laughs> thank you thank you for your positive words thank you for giving this positivity to the students of expressions as well and maintaining this with us thank you so much thank you uh, so gurjeet ma'am actually uh, yeah gurjeet ma'am actually we have a, a guest speaker eva uh, eva are you there eva uh, yes i'm here yeah, can you hear yeah, me yeah 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 so actually uh, uh uh actually eva have some important work and he has to go so uh, we are proceeding with the eva eva please continue thank you very much thank you very much distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen good morning and welcome to this beautiful session thank you witty for uh, gossip association for having me my name is eva risani and um, i am from a very small exotic country called gabon but i live in south africa uh, permanently and um, i am a published author i am an entrepreneur i am a global speaker i am a philanthropist i run a language service company and i also run a non-profit organization that is called she phoenix fam phoenix uh, that works for the betterment of girls uh teenage mothers young mothers and women of all walks um i am so so happy to be here today you know it's it's amazing and i think that it is wonderful that we are all here together to discuss on this very important topic so who am i i'm a mother of three children three daughters beautiful daughters i am married to the most wonderful man and um you know i am a believer and uh, there were a lot was said about that i believe in god and i think that we are all great we are we have all greatness within us and we are like diamonds raw diamonds that are just waiting to be polished so that we can unleash our true potential so thank you again witty gossip for the opportunity to be uh, on this platform with you and to speak alongside great wonderful amazing speakers and um without further ado allow me to take you on on an imag imaginary trip um have you ever been in a situation where you feel as if you were in a horror movie where you are the main character and you feel like um you you are struck by fear to such an extent that you see no way out i think most of us have gone through something like that uh meet asha Asha is a 13 year old whose life changed drastically when she fell pregnant. The part the father of the child denied the pregnancy. She almost died when she gave birth to her first daughter and she thought that her life was finished, that it was the end of her and that her child will never have a good opportunity in life. She went through a lot physically and she went through a lot mentally. She tried to commit suicide but she was saved she didn't die her future looked bleak but you know with such a lot of miracles happening in her life she made it and she became successful she found true joy and she made uh, uh, she she gave a very good life to her child meet another person meet vuyo vuyo is a young 17 year old he was going through a lot at school because he was trying to fit in he tried to please his friends but in the process he lost his own identity he put up a face every single day and in the process he felt overwhelmed got depressed he he started having suicidal thoughts and almost lost his life his parents picked up that there was a problem they used everything at their disposal to help him find his true identity deal with the issues at play he admitted having issues and willingly chose to work on himself he took it one day at a time and turned his life around meet someone else meet stella stella is a 26 year old woman she was she went through a lot with her family 
she went through a very traumatic experience. She didn't realize how deeply she was affected by, by everything she went through. One day she started getting very tired. She couldn't concentrate anymore. Her, she could hear her heart beat racing fast, even, even, even when she was not working out or going to the gym or walking. And after a few weeks, she went to see a doctor and they discovered that she was suffering from hyperthyroidism. And that was a consequence of stress. She went through a major surgery, but she survived the surgery. They took out 90% of her thyroid glands and she kept on living with 10% of her thyroid gland and she didn't have to take medication for life. She learned a lot from her, uh, her experience. She learned that she needed to deal with her emotions, that she needed to live a more balanced life where she would take care of her, her emotions, her spiritual aspect as well, as well as her physical life. And she learned that she needed to take care of herself physically, emotionally, and mentally. Meet Paula. Paula went through a traumatic event that left her disabled for life. Every five months, she would be locked up in a room, heavily, heavily uh, sedated. Why? Because she lost her mind due to a very traumatic experience. She had to take medicine every single day of her life. Because of that, she didn't have the life that she wanted to have. And one day, she lost hope because no one could help her. No one was there for her when she needed people the most and she died committing suicide. These people are people around us. These people are people in our communities. These people are people in our lives. And sometimes we do not see what is happening at school, at home, at work, in our communities. This is because we need to change things. We need to change the way we see things. We need to change the way we see um, well-being. What is well-being? A lot has been said, and I'm not going to try and uh, explain what it is. What is um, mental health? A lot has been said as well, and I will not try to explain this as well. But I think we with everything we are going through now, we need to redefine well-being. We need to redefine mental health. We need to redefine what it is to be uh, educated. For me, it's all about life literacy. It is all about knowing how to take care of my emotions, how to heal my emotional emotions, how to deal with experiences we are going through at school, how to deal with the fact that at school there's bullying, how to deal with the fact that at school there are people we, who tease us, how to deal with the fact that I think that I'm not good enough when on the contrary, you are good enough. And this is something that starts with ourselves and that goes together with what people do around us. So it means, I think, as, a, as, a, as steps to go through is first, we need to add personal development in everything we do, because we need to get to learn how to use, how to work with our emotions. We need to heal. We need to understand how do I find my identity. We need to raise self-esteem. We need to raise self-confidence. And a lot has been said about the different tools that you can, you can use. So I will not repeat because uh, the previous speaker said a lot and they gave you practical steps. But what I want you to know is a lot is going in our minds and it all starts here before it goes down you know so there the, there is a certain conversation that you need to have with yourself am i happy with my circum my current circumstances do i blame anyone for where i am now will blaming others make any difference uh, do i consciously or unconsciously let things happen by not being present by not being fully aware of what is going on or by ignoring my intuition because we also have to understand that we are divine we are made in god's image and taking this into consideration it means that we have the power to change 
any circumstance we, are, we find ourselves in. We were talking about learning English. Well, you have the, ab the ability to learn any language you want and learning a language is wonderful because then it shows you that you can do anything. If you can learn English, look at me, I speak French. I'm a French speaker from Gabon, but I speak English as a second language. It was not easy for me doing Shakespeare and everything, but today I have an honors degree from one of the greatest universities in South Africa, and I speak English to you, and I'm, I am a global speaker. So it shows that when you want, when you know you can, you will do it. And... Um, I will finish with a few steps that I put in one of the books that I published recently. I would say that when you want to change your life and have, you know, improve your well-being and your mental health, you need to work on your emotion. You need to be able to transform yourself. But it starts, it starts with you wanting to do that. So one, accept and grief and you can cry you can scream you can talk do it do what it has to come out do not be strong do not keep it in you have to really scream and put it out you have to bite the bullet just bite the bullet and do it and let your pain out secondly you have to dig deep within trust in god's plan you know you must look at the bigger picture and find you know that silver lining you know and it comes with having what, what Les Brown says, only quality people in your life. Surround yourself with people who, who will tell you things for what they are and who will take your hands and help you get from one step to another. Use your misfortune as a motivation to find your new, your new purpose. When something happens to you, there is a reason. Try to understand. Do not only stay negative. Try to see why is this happening? What is the lesson to learn? And then take it further. Make the decision to rebuild. Take some time off. We were talking about taking time to go out, to be in nature. Yes, it is very important because it helps you breathe and, you know, see life in a different perspective. So it is very important to have that time to rely on the divinity in you. And it has no age. It starts with young ones and it goes with old ones. And then you need to visualize Pray with an end goal in mind. See and feel what you want. Speak it to life, you know. Plan your next course of action. Perhaps do a brainstorming with your only quality people, you know, and your best friend or your parents or someone you really trust in. Keep yourself inspired. Like coming to a summit like that and wonderful, wonderful organization, wonderfully, a lot of good things said. Well, Keep on going to summits like that. Listen to people who inspire you. Listen to people who went through what you are going through, but who made it. It will inspire you. It will keep you motivated. Read inspirational stories of people who went through the same thing you are or went through. Listen to motivational speakers and pray. It is very important to pray to because praying will also help you find that inspiration you are going through. And finally, receive. Allow yourself to be happy. Everyone can be happy. Allow yourself to dream again. Expect better things to happen in your life. You know, a practical way to achieve that would be to do a vision board. Have you heard of vision boards? Well, you can Google it. There's a lot on internet. Google it and do your vision board today, you know, because then you will speak it to life. So changing your life is not a piece of cake, uh, but it is exciting. You see, like the stories of Asha, Stella, Paula that I told you, it's not easy, but you can also do it. And being young, you have, you know, your whole life in, for, in front of you. So thank you very much for this. I just want to add that for us to, to implement the goals, we need to take it in a different aspect, at different levels. It means that at school, why not start with coaching at a young age? There's no, no age for that. We need personal development. We need to help people deal with their emotions because it, you know the, the heart is key. And if we cannot work at our with our heart set, well, we will be doomed. But I believe that we all have. Uh, we are all made with the right stuff and we are diamonds in the making. So thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to be with you today. Thank you so much. I love you all and God bless you.
Yes, dear. Uh, do you want to do this gesture? I want to capture you. Amazing, amazing. And your speech was fabulous, dear. Fabulous. So much energy, so much enthusiasm in your speech. Uh, thank now, you uh, so much. Yes, yeah, thank you, dear. Gurjeet, please proceed further. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful uh, words and showing us a different insight of uh, good health and well-being. Thank you so much, ma'am. Moving towards our next speaker, I would like to invite Elaine uh, Nurain from Philippines. Elaine, ma'am, if you are here, over to you. Hello, a marvelous April 3, 2022 to all of you, most especially to the organizer of this prestigious endeavor, Global Peace and Sustainable Summit 2022. I am Mrs. Elaine Noreen Gachalian baxa educator and researcher from Batang State University, Philippines, saying enthusiastically, hello, Philippines. Hello, witty gossip association and hello world. Warmest congratulations to the organizer and sending my gratefulness to be part of this beneficial and intellectual discussion. It is indeed a great avenue to deliver it insightful ideas to ensure a global empowerment towards a resilient planet for a sustainable and equitable tomorrow. Well, the United Nations is purposely driven by the goals and ideals outlined in its founding charter. The United Nations has changed over time to keep up with a continuously changing world. But one thing has not changed. It's the only place on earth where all the world's nations can, can come together to debate common issues and create solutions that will benefit everyone. So the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which were endorsed by the world leaders during a historic UN summit in September 2015, went into effect on January 1, 2016. And over the 15 years, Government mobilized efforts to end all forms of poverty, fight inequality, and combat climate change while guaranteeing that no one is left behind. So thanks to this new universally applicable goals. One of the SDGs of the United Nations is SDG3, which refers to good health and well-being. There is significant progress against a number of major sources of mortality and diseases. Life expectancy has risen considerably. Baby and maternal mortality rates have, dis has de uh, have decreased. HIV has been eradicated and malaria deaths have been cut in half. The 2030 Agenda recognizes the importance of good health to long-term development and the interdependence of the two. It considers expanding economic and social disparities, rapid urbanization, climate and environmental risk, and the ongoing burden of infectious diseases and emerging challenges such as non-communicable diseases. Indeed, SDG's three goal of eradicating poverty and reducing inequality will require universal health coverage. Well, definitely we hear numerous action steps to maintain good health and well-being from my co-guest speakers today. And I would like to say maraming salamat. Thank you for sharing healthy reminders to our dear listener to love ourselves for maintaining good health and wellness. It's indeed a full pack of salient knowledge and sharing best practices from well-esteemed speakers. So at this point, let me share how Filipinos work together to be healthy during COVID-19 pandemic. And I, ho I hope you may get learnings from it. Well, 
it was March 2020 when the Philippines lock, got locked down due to this COVID-19. And many Filipinos become health conscious. The fact that they need to wash their hands most of the time, we use alcohol to disinfect ourselves and the things that we hold. We eat healthy foods to protect ourselves from COVID-19. We became interested in reading information concerning COVID-19. Though it has negative impact, not only in the Philippines, but in the whole world, still the mortality rate in the Philippines is lowered compared to other countries. One of the reasons is that President's Office and IATF Internet Interagency Task Force work together in managing the COVID-19 pandemic. The government always remind the people to follow the instructions given by the various agencies of the government in the Philippines. The government issued policies and orders for the people to stay at home. And we had curfew. The president even showed on television to talk to the people about COVID-19, like a father who always give advices to his children, jogging someone's memory to remember what he is saying. The police, the soldiers had checkpoints for the people to be secured. Indeed, there is a strict implementation of the government, of the, in, the policies, and being cooperative and obedient of the Filipino people to the authorities concerning COVID-19. In my opinion, it is successful as the government was able to control the mortality rate in the Philippines. So this served as a good example to the whole world. The government and the people are supportive to achieve good health and wellness. Hence, public health, after all, is a critical factor in national development. Another good example that I'm going to share, that deep cooperation is evident in the Philippines, Philippines supporting the health and wellness is the MIND project in my affiliated university in the Philippines, Batangas State University. MIND project, M-I-N-D project. So we have this institutionally ongoing funded research, the MIND project, mental health initiatives, neutrons, and development. A mental health state of Batangas State University, which started this August 16, 2021 to July 30, 2022. So this study assesses the mental health of students, teaching and non-teaching personnel of 11 campuses of Batangas State University. And they aim to propose mental health intervention as compliance to the RA-111036 and CSC Memorandum Order Number 4 series, series of 2020. So moreover, this is one of the priority of Calabarzon Regional Research Agenda 2018 to 2022, aside from our university's response to mental health concern of this pandemic. And that this Research is really advantageous to make an intervention plan appropriate to the mental status of students and employees of Batanga State University. This is a great project in my university. Truly, madly, deeply in the Philippines, we work together, we work harder, live better, and spend more time on things that truly matter health and well-being we tend to become more we tend to give more time in a more important concerns for health after all inevitably curtails enjoyment of life and coupled with potentially financial crippling cost of health care it is understandable that more filipinos strive to increase knowledge on key health issues and adopt better lifestyle habits to avoid acquiring disease. I repeat, public health, after all, is a critical factor in national development. Health and wellness 
are definitely the two pillars of human life. These are the things that keep us alive and healthy. Health is definitely affect people's quality of life in many ways. It have a huge impact on our lives. So we must take care of ourselves while eating well, exercising, give us a body and brain instant benefits of managing the stress, depression, and anxiety. But remember, true well-being comes with balance, constant growth, and acceptance. Remember Mahatma Gandhi's quotation, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Love ourselves by maintaining good health and well-being. Thank you so much and mabuhay with the Gossip Association. Mabuhay, Pilipinas Kumahal. Uh, dear, uh, dear, do you want to uh, do this gesture? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your wonderful speech. It was fabulous. Fabulous, dear. Fabulous. And in future, definitely we would like to collaborate with your mind project, dear. Yes, definitely. My pleasure. Okay, dear. Okay. Uh, Gurjeet, ma'am, uh, please uh, move with the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable speech. Thank you once again. Thank you. So moving towards our next speaker, I would like to invite Malti Chaudhary, ma'am, from India. Over to you, Malti, ma'am. Thank you, Gurjeet, ma'am. Greetings to one and all excellencies and all the guest members, participants, and my team members. I'm highly delighted to be a part of this global summit of peace and sustainable development. So can I share my screen? Let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible to you all. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Thank you so much. So thank you for introducing me. I am Malti Chaudhary, and I have done graduation, post-graduation in computer sciences as well in English literature. So I did a few years with IT companies and there I realized that working in an IT company or working as a professional, I found many people struggling with communication. And we all know these days, communication plays an important role in our lives to achieve success. And success gives us happiness. And the topic for today's is mental well being. I'm very happy to receive a lot of knowledge about the well being. Sanakshi, ma'am, Pradeep, sir, very well shared the few steps which will help us to maintain and sustain our mental well-being. So I started with uh, expressions, communicating students, women, and we are training people to communicate in English, not only because it is an international language, but it helps people achieve their dreams. So we are talking about peace, global peace and sustainable development. Peace is not merely absence of war or violence. I feel peace is a mental state, a state of harmony, friendship and confidence. If one is confident, he is happy and which is very important for mental well-being. Since I have joined Expressions, even before that, I strongly believed that education not only increases equality, 
it leads to mental social emotional well being of each one of us whether it's a child or a women or elderly people with expressions i started teaching training people english communication and there i come across with a young and old women we all know women plays an important role in the development of society as well as nations we trained women from pan india to nepal south africa to saudi jain to muslim women and here when i was interacting with them i was teaching them while they were learning english language their confidence was high and it also helped them reducing their stress of not being able to communicate with other members of the society say for example as mothers they have to interact with their teachers with the teachers of their children or they have to communicate with the friends of their children as children mostly are learning english in their schools so now there is an expectation from mothers as well to communicate in english people are very social women is working in all eras of the uh, society so as a member of the social groups they also want to communicate express their uh, views share their knowledge in english also english learning was a must to achieve or fulfill their dreams they wanted to crack interviews wanted to start their careers etc so we have many success stories but i am happy to share one of them with you minakshi minakshi jain from the jain community uh, community she joined us with a dream in her eyes she joined express communicative english program during the covid first wave here is the picture and i'm happy to say that she took up that challenge of learning english when she came to us she did not know a single word of english and she was not at all confident enough that will she be able to learn english and achieve her dreams let me tell you what was her dream her dream was to become a graphologist and for this she wanted to uh, take an international certificate which because she was from hindi medium her studies were uh, she pursued all the studies in hindi medium she was expert in hindi but the certification what she was looking for was in english and as it was an international certificate so she challenged herself and started the live classes with us after completing the course i am happy to say and i am very proud to say that she took up took that international certificate in graphology and today she is pursuing her passion as a graphologist her clients are all over the globe and we are honored that we could help her so education is helping to achieve the mental well being because it comes through confidence if one is confident he is happy and can achieve her or his dreams as sonakshi mam said do what gives you happiness i totally agree and i would like to say as tiana mam suggested we should have hope and faith in god so all these things helps us to sustain development to development and as well as mental well being and it makes every individual happy and satiated so as an educationist or during this teaching process i actually realized the importance of well being i am really thankful for you uh, to give me this chance of speaking my views about mental well being i am really um, grateful to you for making me a part of this submit 
a big thanks to witty organization witty gossip organization for this wonderful opportunity thank you namaste thank you so much for your short and crisp presentation ma'am thank you so much thank you uh, dear gurjeet uh, we have yes. uh, iv iv barreto iv are okay. you there i we i can see your name in a participant list actually she is from a very uh, new country actually even i uh, haven't heard about this country yeah even i was reading about it yesterday yeah, keep worthy yeah. yes yeah keep worthy right keep keep worthy i think keep worthy right yeah right right So Ivy, are you there? Okay, yeah. There is a problem with the Ivy. Ivy is not a co-host. So I would like to request technical team, please make her a co-host. Ivy's camera is on. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to. everyone thank you for having me in this platform the global peace and sustainable development summit 2022 and i'm honored to be in the as a guest speaker for sgg3 that is health and good health and well-being for all ages i'm ivy barreto i'm a developer a coach mentor and in my findings as a emotional geographer and a researcher the pandemic has disrupted the world ecosystem in lots of ways in different countries um in different ways being physical psychological financial emotional disruption and coming from cape verde because that's the country that i'm representing is a composition of seven islands you know and then six are which six are actually in motion so they are young in demographic and there is huge and there's a huge issue at the moment because there's a rise in terms of domestic violence and as well as how the un as well have carried out their own research that is 60% of a rise due, due to pandemic you know in their research so africa um, that is where cape verde is located in west africa um it's a taboo still because they don't recognize it as one and they since they are young in demographic and is mainly youth so i'm addressing this to youth and family members so they can be able to address manners in a way so they can their youth can be able to move forward you know and be part of the ecosystem that is the world at the moment so the part of our, that i personally want to address is the emotional you know the emotional well-being because that is a part that not uh, not everybody talks about but that's where everything is stored and that's where everything begins so once it's stored then other issues start manifesting from within and then start generating the psychological aspect then the in terms of the health wise they start having other symptoms and then can lead to other things such as death um, but the main thing is knowing how to address that addressing that as us as educators and practitioners being able to give them a tool because the other speakers have spoke in their own manner what you know with other tools they spoke very well different different methods um but it's essential in terms of recognizing that there's a tool called art therapy as well because that is a way of giving the people that are non verbal a way for them to be verbal and then as practitioners and educators be able to listen to them in a way without no judgment so they can be able to express what they have from within bring it out so they can begin to heal because where our families are in disruption 
we have to be able to listen to them outdoors or maybe in schools, in wherever they are, so we can be able as well to contribute in their healing because them healing, we are all healing at the same time. And not only healing at the same time, there is unity, there is um, strength in unity. And they themselves, they themselves as well, when they are practicing this tool, that is the art therapy, they can begin as well to profit from their pain, you know, and the communities as well, they will profit from the pain because for example, at Cape Verde, they are young in demographic, they, they are into arts, they are in sports, they are into the acting. So if we can be able to leverage all those artistry and put it together, imagine what the communities can look like. You know, they can be able to express and then countries can begin to heal and come up in the map and wouldn't be dependent so much in the West and leveraging what they have on ground. For example, in Cape Verde, the country at the moment, well, that is one of the projects I'm working on, you know, with the youths, that is leveraging the sports, uh, where sports and health merges with the, merges with the arts. So when you put them all together, it's quite a journey, all of them, but it's quite an interesting journey. And I just leave this, I just leave this for the youths to, you know, for them to understand that there's power from within and it's up to them to bring whatever they have from within out. So, and showcase it to the world because there's nobody that doesn't have a voice. Everybody has a voice and everybody has a strength. So leveraging that strength and counteracting that negative thoughts that they have. And um, we have something that is nature. Nature works for our advantage. It helps us to heal as one of the speakers said. So if we can be able to leverage that, we can be able to as well to be within nature and breed. So whenever we are coming back to our households where we live, our habitat, where everything starts, we can begin to you know, appreciate more our environment, the people around us, and the planet that we have. And thank you very much, everyone, for listening. And thank you, Wiki Gossip, for having me. And youth, you are the leader of tomorrow. So keep strong. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Dear, uh, do you want to do uh, you? Uh, Wow, amazing, amazing. Thank you very much, dear. Thank You're you. You're welcome. And actually, I want to uh, know about your country. Uh, as you said, uh, it is uh, located in Western Africa, right? Yes, it is, yeah. Okay. So, what is the famous in your country? Uh, first of all, uh, please uh, uh, name your country, dear. The country is called Cape Verde. Okay. Cape Verde. They speak okay. Portuguese language. So okay. in, in Cape Verde, in Portuguese, they say Cape Verde. Okay, okay. So nice to hear. Nice to hear, dear. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Gurdjieff, ma'am, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again. Now I would like to proceed the meeting uh, and I would like to call uh, our next speaker, uh, Ms. Kanchan Pandey, ma'am, from India. Over to you, Kanchan, ma'am. Kanchan ma'am, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, Gurjit ma'am. Yeah. Namaste, everyone. I am really happy to be the part of Global Peace and Sustainable Development Summit 2022. I am the teacher partner with Expressions. My name is Kanchan Pandey. By profession, I am a software engineer and language trainer. My education, uh, like I have done graduation in computer science and uh, my post-graduation in uh, English literature. My experience is that like I worked as a front-end developer in IT company for two years and has been working with expressions for three years. Okay, if I talk about good health and well-being, so it is connected to the infrastructure and facilities provided by the state 
and if i talk about the other hand it is connected to the confidence support and good opportunities to the given students as a facilitator as an educator i impart my knowledge education to the students but the problem is that english as an international language is really a demand of today's life everybody wants to speak in english but why why english is important so english is not like the important subject for everyone but yes it is important subject for those who like they don't have their native language they are struggling to communicate so if you go to anywhere people can speak english people can understand english so it can be the common language for everyone that's why we are here to help them out now in big cities the students who are coming from the nearby villages they are actually struggling with the communication they have a lot of things they want to give but still they are they have the challenge to speak in english they are not able to communicate so a lot of opportunities are there but they are not able to crack them they are not able to enter to that corporate world any organization there is a video of uh, one of my student which i would like to share with in front of you all the boy's name is mukesh kushwaha he really belongs to a rural area where people even don't know that how to speak hindi well he joined expressions we helped him and i would like to present his video in front of you all so that you can hear him so i am mukesh kushwaha and i am the student of expressions whose tagline is the voice of confidence as you can see in me today i am telling about my journey how did i learn to speak english in the starting i knew some english like reading writing but i didn't know to speak english and i wanted to speak english then i joined uh, expressions beginner course where i learned in the form of uh, sos and evs i learned to identify uh, sense of sentences and also english basic structures and i spent 75 hours in beginner course and i completed my beginner course uh, then my teacher suggested me about an advanced course and uh, i wanted to be fluent in english then i joined advanced course also uh, where i did only practice with my uh, classmates and uh, i spent 45 hours in advanced courses and i completed uh, advanced course also and uh, uh, many people who uh, who say hindi medium student never can speak english and i want to say them i am a hindi medium student i and uh, i completed my all uh, education in hindi medium only and uh, as you can see i am able to speak english then uh, you can also speak english uh, only you have to uh, be eager about uh, english learning and uh, you will have to practice about it then you can also learn and in the last i want to say thanks to kanchan ma'am because i am speaking today uh, only because of uh, her because her teaching method uh, was very good and uh, uh, her teaching method is very simple uh, which uh, uh, every student can understand with very simple and uh, Uh, in the last i want to say thanks okay thank you so much everyone for listening to this video uh, patiently it was just an example to show you like uh, expressions as a startup are uh, really helping to the students who really uh, like facing challenge in communication they want to grow in their life but there is a problem in their life which is communication now express provides them not only communication english but also skills that they are needing they are requiring to crack the interview or to get to the position where ever they are aspiring so i really feel sometime that uh, as of now like uh, till yet i have taught thousands of students 
and i really feel good whenever they speak in front of me they grow in their career so some of the students they are really uh, doing good job in their field and everything so i i really feel very good that they are in the good position they are in the good uh, platform they are working with that so i'm really happy and uh, this is really uh, like for me this is a kind of relaxation is one of the most important point in the case of mental well being it is a practical approach to enable a person so much so that she can fight all the circumstances and advertise according to united nation the lower and uh, and the lower middle income countries need 18 million health workers but they also need people who can support those societies with motivation education and awareness as you can see the report which i am presenting on the screen i just want to tell you about expressions as a teacher partner we are not here just to uh, impart the knowledge as a tuition center no we are an institution where each individual gets an opportunity to grow up and increase their social economical and educational status i feel the supporting these students mentally is highly necessary as this is the what actually they needed they need this support they need creating to their future i always tell to my students in the class once again i would like to tell them they all are here the teachers can open the door but you must enter it yourself as a teacher i am available for my student 24 into 7 whenever they need my help thank you so much everyone for listening to me thank you so much thank you so much ma'am for your continuous efforts in improving the students of expressions through your efforts thank you so much once again now i would like to invite the next speaker of the day miss patricia from somerset ma'am if you are here over to you namaste namaste ma'am good morning afternoon and good evening everyone i'm actually uh, coming from uk somerset it's a uh, it's a region of uh, uk um maybe i will say just a little bit about myself i'm success and mindset growth strategies coach and also working mentor and i'm working with uh, saint mangos the project was nhs we a lot of collaborating for nhs in uk and uh, also we are trying to improve mental health issues of our clients so i would like to mention about seven ways that pandemic is affecting our mental health which is related to our mind and body we are more anxious depressed and traumatized some of us are more domestic violence has increased and the effects depend on our personality lifestyle and demographics it's worse for disadvantaged groups and affects our companion by rushes and what situation matters count for ourselves and others i'm here to discuss what situation matters one of the biggest disruptions to our daily lives today is how the pandemic has affected our world doctors nurses and paramedics are taking the urgent task of caring of covid which is, is around nation patients uh, for one person many of these jobs have transitions to remote work asking employees to isolate at home other people have been unable to continue work during pandemic and waiting for the time when they will be called back but was it clear that people who are unable to work temporarily even if they don't get laid off have worse mental health and why working in office might seem risky it was the people working from home who were actually more distressed and less satisfied with their lives another part caring for yourself and others there's a lot of we don't have control over in this situation 
which is stressful in and of itself. But what we can control? But this is the first question to ask. Can we control the time, our stress, our needs? Can we control the information what we receive to not be overwhelmed? Yes, we can if we create and organize the right system and process that can help us to track us how long we're spending time to do things or make things. This is the way how we can cope with stress and reduce stress in a healthy way. But we can't self-improve our way out of the pain and difficulty. What we are going through right now is a trauma, or at least a major stressor on global scale. This is one of those times when life really is harder a little bit or a lot. Feeling bad is a part of being human. And right now, that's something many of us need to face, even as we work to feel better they connected and help others. The main key solutions, which I would like to represent, are controlling everything, what is around us, by tracking. Make right choices for us. Caring for ourselves and others, engage more. Self-improved, find our own formula for a better living and stress-free living. Find balance. Implement life work system process. To reduce the level of trauma, you need to unblock your past by coaching, mentoring, or by therapies. This is the solution we should implement to have a global sustainable development. Control your growth, your step, our success. Thank you. And I would like to say also, I'm really honored and blessed Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable words. Uh, dear, uh, dear, please do this gesture again. I want to capture you. Yeah, just hold on. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much for your presence, dear. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I would like to invite our next uh, speaker, Professor Nada from Croatia, Croatia, I think. That's the right pronunciation. So, Professor Nada, ma'am, if you're here, over to you. Uh -huh. uh, greetings from Croatia. Uh, okay. Uh uh, thank you. First, I want to thank uh, Dr. Supriya and Viti Gossip for inviting me. I was at the first day, what, which was marvelous. And today uh, I have a new topic. Uh, I will share my presentation. So I'm a professor. I'm coming from uh, Split Croatia University, Economic University of Business Tourism. Uh, and I'm really honored and grateful to be here today. Uh, so uh, listening, uh, great speakers uh, this morning, uh, I hear many, many advices, uh, great speeches, great presentations. Now I want to share a few words about uh, good health and well-being. Uh, coming from Croatia, Croatia is really investing a lot uh, in SDGs, uh, not only in SDG 3, in all SDGs and have many grants from European Union. Uh, but till 2030, uh, like other countries, I'm sure that we will not achieve all the goals. Uh, health in SDG era, well-being. We need to ensure lives, and that is our mission. We are educators. We need to promote well-being. We need to promote health. So I want to say the power of positive emotions. We are talking about the stress. Every day is stressful. Exception if we said this situation with COVID, this situation with the wars. And we really need to take every morning when we get up a deep breath. 
deep breath, three deep breaths. And that is the way to make a balance of our mind and body. And that is really necessary. And I always teach my students because the day is going, uh, the day will be uh, underway when you get up, uh, you need to have a positive mindset. So uh, what we will do for that, uh, yoga, meditations, many, many uh, exercises that we really need for our positive mindset. And we have the will of well-being. We know that we need to take care about our emotional, spiritual, financial, professional, physical, and relational well-being. Being. And there are many, many tips, and I want to say a few of the tips for well being. Today, we are here from all around the world. We are connecting. This is a great tip for well being. I'm really happy to see many of my friends here on this platform and to see many new people and have a good relations, not only with people. We need to Teach our students good relations are very important. Physically active, learn new skills. Call morning, we are learning something new. And also giving to others. I hope that uh, every one of us gives something new to an educator. Uh, and we need to pay attention for our mind health. But there will be no well being if we don't have healthy habits and we are talking about ecological education and the system change and i want to say something today that that's very very important is nutrition nutrition is saving life and making change in our life and statistics are showing that the situation is really really bad uh, and if we talk about well-being and health we are achieving all the SDGs. We are in correlation with all SDGs. And nutrition education is necessary for what? We need to eat. We need to eat good. First me, how can I teach my student? Because there are days, many days that I don't eat normal. Because we uh, are under stress, we need to make our work and we are not eating health. So nutrition education is really necessary for us, not only for, for the individual, for the family, for the community and national. So all legislative must need to act on this way. And we know that malnutrition is a global problem today. And there are five principles of good nutrition. Weight loss and weight gain come down to 1K equation. Proteins is the most important macronutrient. We need to eat less uh, and it needs to help us and we need to use and to uh, consume many fruit and vegetables. And that is a hierarchy of the eating. When you take more energy, then you burn. Uh, when you take in less energy, then you burn, you lose your weight. When you take in same energy as you burn, you maintain that. And that is the energy balance. And what I want to say today, uh, what is necessary for the education? What is necessary for the school? The schools need to improve a meal for all students. And school meals for all. What it means? Um, it means that the school is playing a critical role in the education. And in my country, in Croatia, in many schools, the students have meals, but there are, there are parts uh, of the country. And also I know uh, all over uh, the world, there are many schools who are not providing the school meals. And I uh, contact the literature about this topic. There are many, many studies. There are many studies and we also need to learn that and uh, to teach our students uh, because this morning I hear uh, many, they are coming from rural. I'm really sad when I see uh, when the when the time of the, uh, when, when, when see uh, students who don't have money to buy uh, the meal and he is coming 
uh, far from the school and he don't have a meal that day. Uh, so every, every day we know that there are many students uh, and many children around that don't have uh, not a meal at school. And we know that have maybe uh, not meal at home. Uh, so, uh, I know that uh, I show here a little example because uh, we are here now, this global summit is in India, and uh, like example, uh, I'm active uh, member uh, of uh, IAU, and I want to show here like IAU uh, in India is providing in many schools uh, meals, and uh, that is an example also for many private uh, schools. Uh, nutrition is heart and is in the heart of the SDGs. What it means, like economic, uh, I want to say that every dollar invested uh, in nutrition gives $16 of return. And that is really uh, true. Uh, and if we want to, to have uh, a, health, a healthy life, we can create uh, for us our meal, like with proteins, carbs, fats, and uh, veggies. And that is really necessary for us and for uh, our family and for everyone. And so how can school meals contribute to the SDG? When we're talking about the SDGs, when we're talking about the food, uh, there are many uh, benefits and we really need to understand uh, food and then climate change. Uh, Mrs. Smiley uh, already talked about uh, uh, food and climate change. Yes, it is necessary. How can we eat healthy? Uh, if we know that uh, the situation with uh, the climate changes and all is really, really uh, dangerous. Uh, so contributing to the SDGs. Uh, SDG 3 is contributing with no poverty, uh, with zero hunger, with education and with all the SDGs. So together we can make a change only together and if we fight and if we educate our students we can make a change so food security food availability domestic food production food imports access to food and there is no one side model for nutrition standards there is no one model for well-being and we uh, need uh, to uh, I want to say that we are here and uh, today and all these 70 days, uh, uh, we need to educate ourselves uh, too. And that is the way how we can disseminate this new knowledge and the skills we get. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm really honored and grateful to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful and colorful presentation. Thank you very much. So now I would like to move ahead with our next uh, guest speaker, uh, Rogzani, ma'am, from Greece. Yes. So, ma'am, if you're here. I am thank here. You. Thank, thank you so you. much. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, um, Nada, for the great uh, speech that we have just heard from uh, Croatian, our Croatian speaker. It is a great privilege for me to be part of this global uh, peace and sustainable development under the warmth and care of Witty Gossip Association. Thank you. Under the warmth and care of Dr. Supriya Patak. Thank you for the great uh, opportunity. Today is the day three. We're talking about global health. We're talking about well-being. And we have heard and I have learned so many things. What we can understand it is, it is that if we just only focus, if we just put our mind to these two words, to well-being and health, we can start conversation and we provoke profound, fundamental questions about our life 
what really matters to our personal life? What really matters? In, what is the value in our communities? What kind of person of society, of globe, do we really want to be? What we do here, all this engagement, all this globe, all these people, all this rainbow that it's, it is in front of us, these ideas, the pathways, the engagement, we are finding solutions about these fundamental questions of life. Well done, Gossip, with the Gossip Association for the initiative, well done. What are now I want to put to focus here, I want to focus in metrics, in measurements, because we need statistics in order to capture and to, to push a little bit, to push a lot the governments to create plans. So we need statistics. And in order to go to measurement and statistics, we need to know the indicators. What are the indicators? The indicators are from society part, it is uh, about the indicator of the happiness of children. It is the indicator of income equality. It is the indicator of access to housing, of access to nature, of fair, fair work. It is, we need indicators to measure about the rights that all of us were having in health. Now let's move to the individual. We show the indicators of society and now let's zoom in to each individual of us, how we can understand that we are following a healthy life, that we are following an, a well-being life, how we can measure this. We need metrics, we need indicators. In Greece, there is a, a quotation says, I translate, Eva talks, our previous amazing speaker talks and said, let's self-investigate, let's self-improve, let's check about our inner powers, let's find and see what is the engagement with ourselves and next to see the engagement with other people. Another indicator, it is how I connect, how I, com I connect, I engage with you. What is my emotional intelligence? How I manage my emotions? How do I manage you? By seeing your emotions right now. All this, the increase of emotional intelligence, we need to be expressive. Yes, for sure, we need to be expressive. We need to, to use expressiveness activities, poetry, Art, yes, write a journal, use all this expressive in, inner art. There is emotions we need to break through. Volunteer work, it is another way, an indicator that we are in the right track, in the right path. Yes, volunteer, our time, see our local society, what is happening, what do we need? Maybe they need the time, maybe they need the knowledge. Another indicator, it is, of course, the healthy diet that we need, we should follow the hydration, the water, the hygiene, all these have already previous speakers talked about them. I will not get into depth and analyze them. The exercise we need. I will also add here the progress. As human beings, we need to have this progress in our life. Yes, let's take some lessons. Let's take some... Uh, um, learn some language or maybe do some progress, maybe in a personal skill or in a society like that. We need also to give to others, to give kindness. Me as a body language coach, I would suggest to give a warm smile, to give an eye contact, to have a fully presence when we listen to a person that is in front of us and sharing maybe sharing something and we need the thought, the emotion, the feeling all in one to have a fully present, to be active listeners. This is indicators for a person to measure, to see if it is a goal of following a well-being and healthy life, and also to the measures that we need the societies to follow. We need the societies when at the heart of the economic strategy to have a broader approach to this strategy, the importance of tackling all inequality, 
to drive our commitment to fair work. The work should be full, fulfilling, and well paid. Yes, we need prosperity, and we do not need psychological stress as well. It is significant to share also some countries, role models, countries that they follow, and they are pioneers in well-being as Iceland. Yes, Iceland, leading in equal payments since 2018 on paternity rights, on child care. Yes, there are also other countries that I can add to this list. Now I want to share about what Adam Smith, this cultist economist, Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, what he said. I'm not going to talk now about stock market, about money, about gold. I'm going to talk about his earlier work to the theory or moral sentiments. Adam Smith said, the value of government is judged by the proportion to the extent that it makes its people happy. We want these governments. We should ask for these governments. Let's work together. Let's put a focus to our well being in our everyday life, in our habits, in our rituals. At the heart of the habit, we need healthy and well being. I think that we owe this to this generation, to our children. I think that I'm certainly, I'm definitely believe that we owe this to our next generation, to our grandchildren, and to all the generation after, to our grand, grand, grandchildren. We ought to create a better, a healthier, a happier society, a harmonious society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am, for uh, for such a speech with full of life. It was really full of life. Your speech was. Thank you so much once again for being here with us on this platform. Thank you, dear. Uh, dear, uh, yeah, yes, uh, dear. Please, please do this right. Okay. Thank you very much. Your speech was so much energetic, and it's a means really full of enthusiasm. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And now uh, we would like to uh, move ahead with the student session. So I would like to request Gurjeet Kaur, ma'am. Ma'am, please take the students, ma'am. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now we would like to speak, uh, move ahead with the students of expressions. Uh, even they would like to contribute in our SDG goal three of good health and well-being. But before uh, I start with the students, I would like to invite Bharti, ma'am, as she wants to speak something about our student. Ma'am, I've given you the option to unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Gurjeet, ma'am. Uh, thank you, everyone. And I would, I would like if anyone can give a round of applause for our students because they belong to a background where, as Malti and ma'am and Kanchan ma'am said, Hindi, even they don't speak proper Hindi, they speak Malvi. And now they're conversing in English. That really matters a lot with just three to four months efforts of trainers, they have started conversing nicely and today they are a part of this summit. And there's one student, Lalini. Today she was having an exam, a very important exam to entrance exam for a model school where her career could have a change. But she dropped that exam just to participate in this summit. So I would Love if everyone would give them a huge round of applause. I would request all the speakers and participants who are present here to give them a huge round of applause so that their energy can be reimbibed once again because they are waiting for so long to speak. So just a humble request for everyone to give a round of applause for the students. And they were so eager. They're continuously messaging me since morning. Ma'am, when my turn will be? Will we be able to speak or not? Will we get a chance? Between 10, they are here. And it's, it's really good that they all were patiently. Even they are from class 8. Great, great. Okay. So I'd like to start with the students now. Thank you, Bharti, ma'am. Yes, Supriya, ma'am, uh, you wanted to say something? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, after the uh, one student uh, uh, means a speech or a presentation, uh, we can also have the student from the Imperial College also. Okay. So, sure. uh, so we I can would... take one by one. Okay, ma'am. 
Okay, so sure, I would uh, request sure. uh, even uh, uh, Sharda ma'am to help me with the name of the students. They might she might be having the list because I don't have one. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She she has she has she has. Okay, so Call please proceed with the first student. Yeah, sure. please proceed with like the first invite, student. Uh, okay, I would like to invite uh, Rishabh Patel from Expressions. Rishabh, if you can hear me. Yeah, ma'am. Okay, all the best. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I am Risha Patel and I am an engineering student and I am also a student of Express English classes. Effective communication is defined as the ability to convey the information with others. It is a process of exchanging ideas, thought, knowledge. It is not just that I never try to learn English, but I did could not achieve what I wanted. After joining the expression classes, I found very effective scientific method, which is brain code transfer, which we can connect our Hindi thought with English uh, was really not easy for me. I used to think that I don't know English, but expression course has taught me that language is not just a problem for communication. I need to increase to my Hindi thought with because it is our primary language. So I started doing that only. And now, with the help of communications course, I can connect my every Hindi thought with English. My entire beta course is in English only. So, Express has removed my language barriers from my life also. I can grow in my career by the times I can face interview to achieve my goals. It is the first steps which we need to clear it. I learned English from expressions as there was no other way for me to learn English background. My fam uh, I have no family background with English. The expression classes has also helped uh, dear, me. Uh, Rishab, dear Rishab, yeah. sorry to say, but yeah, today topic is sustainable development goal three, not English. So yeah, you are actually, uh, yeah, actually I have a message from the uh, jury, uh, jury team. Uh, so you are uh, disqualified because you are uh, continuously talking about the English, not the sustainable development goal three tier. Yeah, ma'am. Sorry, I am not aware of it, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No issue Thank with that. So, uh, Gurjeet, ma'am. Uh, can we have the student of the uh, Imperial College, right? Yes, yes, we can have. Okay. Uh, and ma'am, uh, please uh, tell the students that the topic is Sustainable Development Goal 3, ma'am. Okay? Okay, fine, fine. I'll just have a word yes, with them. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. Parul, ma'am, you can invite the next student. Yeah. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm inviting. I'm inviting. Okay, student. yeah, thank you. So, uh, first student is a BBA alumni. Uh, from the uh, uh, Indoor Management Institute and Research Center. Uh, Astha. Astha, are you there? Astha, Astha, are you there? I think there is a problem uh, with that. Uh, Dr. Parul Sharda, uh, can we have Astha, please? Dr. Parul Sharda, can we have Astha, please? I think she is not listening with me. Actually, she messaged me. Okay. So the next student is. Good evening, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Good evening. Sorry, yeah. Please I continue. Able to unmute myself. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Please continue. Please continue. Myself, Asha Mulani from BV first year, and I am in Indore Management Institute. Today's goal is good health and well-being. I would like to start with a quote. A good health and a long sleep are the best cures in a doctor's book, said by Irish Proverb. The, the new goal for worldwide, for worldwide good health promotes healthy lifestyles, preventive measures, and modern efficient healthcare for everyone. Everyone can help to make sure that we meet the global goals. 
it aspires to ensure health and well being for all including a bold commitment to to end the uh, to end the epidemic of aids tuberculosis malaria and other communicable diseases by 2030 it also aims to achieve universal health coverage and provide access to safe and effective effective medicines and vaccines for all there are 13 targets to create action to promote health and well being for all first reduce maternal mort- mortality second and all preventable deaths under 5 years of age third fight communicable diseases fourth reduce mortality from non communicable diseases and promote mental health fifth promote and threat prevent and threat substance abuse sex reduce road injuries seventh universal access to sexual and reproductive care family planning and education eighth achieve universal health coverage ninth reduce illness and death from hazardous chemicals and pollution tenth implement the framework convention on tobacco control eleventh support research and development universal access to affordable vaccines and medicines 12 increase health financing and support health workforce in developing countries 13 improve early warning system for global wealth and risk thanks to achieve good health and well being are find a goal free charity you want to support whether any donation big or small can make a difference second vaccinate yourself and your kids protest protecting your family from diseases also aid public health third place yourself on organs and tissue donors registered in your country fourth donate your blood save blood save life at last stay safe stay safe and stay happy thank you ma'am for giving me this wonderful opportunity yeah it's amazing it's amazing actually your speech was amazing and you crisp your uh, means uh, your speech and it's totally about the sustainable development goal 3 thank you very much dear for joining us thank you ma'am yeah uh, gurjeet ma'am, you, ma'am please take the next student thank you thank uh, ma'am you. i'm just coordinating with the team till then i would request parul ma'am to uh, move ahead with the next student of their team next student okay so i am calling the next student okay so our next student is uh, naina pradhan naina pradhan are you there Nana, Nana, are you there? Nana Pradhan from Imperial College. Uh, just hold down. Yes, ma'am. I would like to request technical team. Ah, uh, please ah uh, make the Nana Pradhan co-host. uh okay there is a sunaina patel so can we make the co-host to sunaina patel i would like to request technical team please make co-host to sunaina ma'am sunaina ma'am is the co-host now okay so uh, sunaina are you there I think there is a problem. Ma'am, Sunaina has not connected her mic. That's the problem. The video is connected, but mic has not yes, been. Yes, and... yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, there is a name, Mana Manaswini Mishra. Manaswini Mishra, are you there? Actually, we have a Mansi Chaudhary, but she is from Expression. Manasvi Mishra, are you there? No, I think there is a problem with that. Yeah. Um, ma'am, can we take the Expressions student? Yeah, yeah. Just give me a second. Okay. I would uh, now like to invite a love kush Chaudhary if you are here, Chaturvedi. Sorry, love kush Chaturvedi.
लवकुश चतुर्वेदी इफ यू आर हियर प्लीज यस यस लव कुश यू कैन स्टार्ट यस मैम मैम My screen is not visible for me. And your voice is not audible. And you are not audible. Ma'am. यस यस बेटा क्या प्रॉब्लम हो रही है मैम आवाज नहीं आ रही लव कुश व्हाट इज द इशू या या वी आर हियर वी आर हियर एंड वी आर ऑल लिसनिंग टू यू यस मैम मैम प्लीज एक्स पी लव कुश ओके डू यू डू यू वांट टू गिव प्रेजेंटेशन यस मैम डू यू वांट टू गिव प्रेजेंटेशन ओके प्लीज प्रोसीड मैम मैम मुझे हम परमिशन चाहिए स्क्रीन इज नॉट विजिबल फॉर मी जस्ट लव कुश यू आर लव कुश यू आर को हो सो यू कैन you Ma'am. can you are a co-host so you can may share the screen there is no problem ma'am xp loku chaturvedi ma'am not lok yes yes i know i know but you are a co-host okay so i think there is no problem with the sharing screen yes we can see your message that you are you have started the screen sharing so please proceed with that Ma'am, meanwhile, can we take other student? Yes, ma'am. I would request Mansi Chaudhary. And I think, yeah, and I think Bharti, ma'am, yeah, Bharti, ma'am, uh, can guide uh, Love Kush how to present, right? Yeah, sure. Bharti, ma'am, if you can uh, do the same and okay, help okay. Kush. So, I would like to invite our next student, Mansi Chaudhary. Mansi, if you are here. I would like to request technical team, please uh, make a Mansi uh, co-host now. Mansi, I have given you. Gurjeet, man, we can give the chance to Bharat. Okay, so ma'am, uh, actually ready. there are the students from the Imperial College have joined us. So uh, I am calling them again. Okay, Parul ma'am. Yeah, uh, Naina Pradhan, are you there? 
yes i think she is there i would like to request a technical team please make the co host to nena actually there is no such name dr parul ma'am there is a no such name nena is not there i think sunena so, is already the co host sunena so, was there oh yes ma'am sunena so, sunena so, is a co host but you actually you gave the uh, you gave us name nena uh, nena pandhan i think there is a problem uh, man manaswini mishra are you there manaswini mishra i am again calling manaswini mishra i think there is a problem with the manaswini uh, gurjeet please proceed with the uh, other student there is a student also from the expression deepak choudhary actually she uh, he is uh, continuously messaging me uh, he wants to speak on sustainable development goal 3 A student from the expression English. We, uh, ma'am, we have uh, one uh, uh, participant named Jaya Rakesha. She wants to speak about our sustainable development goal three. Yeah. So, I would like to invite Jaya, ma'am. Yeah, I'm here. I am here. you can in my good afternoon ma'am very good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon very nice program mm -hmm. now i am presenting my ppt hello good afternoon everyone mental health good health and well being xp jaya rakhecha is here mental health refers to thinking social and passionate well being it is all about how people think feel and behave people sometimes use the word mental health to mean the lack of mental illness mental health can affect daily living affairs and physical health why is good health and well being important good health is central to social joy and well being that adds significantly to success and wealth and even financial growth as healthy people are more creative say more and live longer key points for good health and well being take proper sleep eat a balanced diet picture your body to sunlight avoid stress exercise daily stay away from smoking and alcohol be social as much as you can find and practice new hobbies do preksha dhyan preksha dhyan is very important for us follow jeevan vigyan be positive why is preksha dhyan important for mental health the goal of preksha dhyan is to bring about addition addition in one's real being through the changes in one's outlook and actions this involves a keen view of the body breathing and physical processes what will occur if good health and well being is not achieved the price of stay is greater lots of children will continue to die from avoidable infection women will die in pregnancy and childbirth and health care charges will continue to drop lots of people into poverty again i can say jain strota and so many strots are very useful in mental peace and mental 
वी कैन मेंटल स्ट्रेस लेस भक्तामर भक्तामर इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर गुड हेल्थ एंड वेल बींग भक्तामर श्रोता इज अ फेमस जैन संस्कृत प्रेयर इट वॉज कंपोज बाय आचार्य मानतंग सेवेंथ सेंचुरी सी द नेम भक्तामर कम्स फ्रॉम अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू संस्कृत टर्म्स भक्ता डिवोटी एंड अमर इमोटल द प्रेयर एपोलोज रिसव नाथ द फर्स्ट तीर्थंकरा ऑफ जैनिज्म इन द टाइम साइकिल there are 48 verses in total the last verse gives the name of the author manatunga it will help in mental peace positive thinking avoiding stress help helps in removing all obstacles problems and disturbances etc at least team vidhi gossip really today's topic is very important mental health गुड हेल्थ एंड वेल बींग उभरना है तो बीज की तरह खपना पड़ेगा मेंटल पीस को निखरना है तो स्वर्ण की तरह तपना पड़ेगा करने पड़ेगा परिवर्तन लाइफ स्टाइल अच्छा बनाने के लिए सुधरता है तो नीर की तरह नितरना पड़ेगा उठो बंधुओं उठो उन्नति इंतजार कर रही है जागो प्रकृति मनोहार कर रही है सम से खुलते हैं प्रगति के नए नए द्वार सम लो ग्लोबल पीस एंड सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट सबमिट के द्वारा मेंटल हेल्थ गुड हेल्थ एंड वेल बींग होने की प्रेरणा दे रही है लास्ट एंड नॉट लेस्ट लास्ट एंड नॉट द लेस्ट क्या सोते सोते ही जिंदगी बीत जाएगी क्या रोते रोते ही जिंदगी बीत जाएगी नहीं बनाओगे लक्ष्य नहीं होगी मेंटल पीस की प्रगति जल बिलोते बिलोते ही जिंदगी बीत जाएगी Be alert. Respect yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jaya Ma'am, for your knowledge and for your words. Thank you very much. Supriya so, Ma'am, would you like to call someone from your team? Uh, no, Ma'am. Actually, uh, uh, please proceed with the Express English students, Ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. So now I would like to proceed with Love Kush Chaturvedi. Love Kush, if you can hear me, and if you can start your presentation now. Okay, I think Love Kush is not there. I would uh, like to invite Mansi Chaudhary. Mansi, you are already the co-host. So you can start speaking. Yes, ma'am. Can I start speaking? Sure, Mansi. You sure, can. Sure, dear. Sure. Hello, I'm Mansi Chaudhary from Dhar. I'm pursuing diploma degree from Dhar Bharat Technic College. First of all, I want to thank Team Expressions for providing me such a great platform. Nowadays, students like me are going through a mental pressure, as the competition is high, and we all want success in terms of a good job. I was also worried about my job because I belong to a place where people don't have much knowledge about latest technology and modern pattern of education. In that environment, I always considered myself as a less competent. As a in that environment, I always feel that I can't do that. For improvement, I joined Polytechnic College. From there, I learned technical skills, but that was not enough for a good job. i have to face interview in that i need good communication skills perfect resume making techniques and so on for that i need to join express english after joining express new classes i i am feeling confident now i can compete with any i think english is an important skill it is but not only because it is an international language but it it you it help us to understand various concepts as almost all contents of various platform are available in english so after completing this course in expressions i i am able to understand various contents of e world and i can express myself in front of others confidently i have attended personality development sessions in expressions which gave me better understanding of myself and made me presentable at last i want to thank everyone present over here for listening to me thank you Thank you so much Mansi 
Now I would like, uh, like to invite Arpit Srivastava. Arpit, if you are here from Expressions. Arpit Srivastava. Arpit, you can unmute yourself now. Yes, yes you're with you. Okay. So you can start speaking now, Arpit. Uh, hello. Firstly, I would like to thank you, Express Expression, to give this opportunity uh, for uh, give this opportunity to speak in a sustainable development and uh, growth resources. So, start. So, I introduce myself. My name is Alice Lasso. I have four members of my family uh, my father, my mother, uh, my brother, and me. My father does full time of the industry. My mother is a housewife. My mother is a housewife. How I can inc how I increase my mental health? So uh, during lockdown, uh, during COVID in 2021, I pass out my tenth uh, tent and start a new shift of class eleven. Uh, my due to the lockdown, my family face of initial problem. So I thought I do a job and help my family financially. I applied job, but uh, they are not happy because of some reason. And give me a year to tell myself for the job. Uh, prepare myself for the job. Uh, one day, an advertiser come at my home and describe me about the computer interest and scholarship. So I thought it is the best opportunity to learn computer skills. Uh, then I pass out the exam and learn, and I have learned computer. After a few months, I got a new opportunity to learn English from Express English. And then I, took, I also took personality development session for myself, um, my passion is why I want to become a graphic designer and animator both. I regularly do hard work and practice to my make practice drawing and practice to make my drawing perfect. These all opportunities and skills develop my confidence as well as mental health. My family, my church, and my friends help and support me to develop my skills. Uh, my confidence level is now increased. And now, and I can easily face the any problem and stress situation. Uh, this, uh, mental, uh, the man, my mental health is also increased, so I can easily done anything. Thank you. Very well done, Arpit. Good, uh, good, Jeet, ma'am. Please take the next student. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Arpit. Thank you once again for presenting yourself. Thank and I would like to invite Lalini. Uh, Lalini Sahu. She's the one who left her exam today. Okay. So Lalini, we would uh, like to invite you. And thank you for giving us your time. I would like to request technical team, uh, please. Yeah, Lalini, now yes, you Yes, ma'am. Yes, proceed, Lalini. Please proceed. Yes, ma'am. One minute, ma'am. Hello to everyone. My name is Lalin Sau and I am from India, Madhya Pradesh, Indore. I live in Pitampur and uh, I am, I get opportunity to, I get opportunity and I am very happy to get this opportunity and opportunity to participate as a speaker in Global Develop Sustainable Submit. All this skills are helping me to grow and become confident. It's affecting how I used to think, feel and act before and now. I find different in myself. It's also helping me to determine how I should handle stress and make choices. And one minute. Yes, Lalini, can you hear me? 
योर म्यूट बेटा वेट आई गिव यू द ऑप्शन टू अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ यस मैम एजुकेशन यस मैम एजुकेशन एंड स्किल्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट एट एवरी स्टेज ऑफ लाइफ आई वांट टू से लर्निंग वेरियस स्किल्स हेल्प अस टू अचीव मेंटल वेलबीइंग एंड मैम आई हैव न्यू थॉट every successful person have a painful story every pain uh, every painful story has a successful ending accept the pain and get ready for fun uh, everyone uh, everyone thinking everyone thinks of changing the world but no one thinks of changing himself har koi is duniya ko badalna chahta hai magar khud ko badalne ke bare mein koi nahi sochta thank you ma'am Thank you so much, Lalini. Your efforts are clearly visible. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for so much for being with us. Yes, I would like to invite the next student from Expressions, Pooja Badole, and I would request the team to make her the co-host, please. Pooja, if you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, Pooja, you can start speaking now. okay ma'am good morning all of you my name is pooja badole i am from pitampur a town near indore city madhya pradesh india and i am glad to tell you that i am the student of expressions and i am the and now i am the member of Exp expressions team also so today our topic is mental well being so for me mental well being is a important lead to a positive life a mental a mental well being is makes us happy and help us have to be happy and if we are happy we make others happy too for mental health we have to keep we, have, we should keep developing ourselves mental mental health is not about a destination but it is the process it's about how you are going it's not about what i uh, how you are going where how you drive it's no, not about where are you going thank you all of you to give me this opportunity to share and this platform is given me the confidence to improve myself with you thank you and have a nice day Thank you so much, Pooja, for being here with us. Thank you for your time. So Thank now you, I would like to invite Love Kush. Love Kush, are you ready with your presentation? I would request the team to make him the co-host, please, so that he can uh, share his presentation. Love Kush from Expressions team. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll share his presentation. Great. Labko, you can start speaking now. Labko, you can unmute yourself and you can start speaking. Ma'am, unmute him. I'm audible. Yes, yes, you're audible now. Yes, loud okay, and clear. Please proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am, and also wish you all a very happy second day of Chet Navratri and Jai Mata Di to all. And uh, today I feel honored to be here. My uh, to be here. And so, my name is Lokesh Chaturvedi. I studied in class 11th with PCM. and i am a student of i friends computer and express english although i was born and brought up in sadol but i know i know uh, but now i live in pithampur uh, in mp with my parents for study i have four members in my family my mom my dad my younger brother and me my father mr kripa sankar chaturvedi is a service man and my mother mr sangeeta chaturvedi is a great homemaker and she is my first teacher and my first friend i am blessed and very happy with my family and so i come to my topic uh, mental well being 
and I will share my experience, which I have learned uh, in three months express classes and what effect has it had my uh, on my mind, personality and speaking English. So um, what is mental well-being? Uh, mental well-being is a state of well-being in which a person realizes his uh, potential can cope with normal stress of life, work uh, profitably, of, uh, uh, profitably and productively and is able to contribute toward his uh, society. Like um, a person who can complete his work productively and with profit. So we can say that his mental well-being is good. And uh, my uh, and second of is how to develop it, ma'am. Uh, how to develop my mental well-being by uh, joining expression. Uh, first, take right stress for our mental health. Second, achieve some right aims for achieve a big goal. Take right meal for our good health. So, uh, first, uh, take right stress for our uh, uh, our mental health. Uh, like, ma'am. Uh, if I speak for uh, our, myself, like as I used to use mobile even after getting tired and due to which my mind stress increased when, uh, even more. But uh, now after getting tired, either I fall asleep uh, or which uh, uh, I don't sleep uh, or which I don't sleep, I start making puzzle which increase the stress of my mind but it stays good for my mind uh, because it also increase my uh, also increase my mind stamina so and next uh, achieve some right aims and achieve big goal ma'am please uh, next slide ma'am please open next slide Yes, ma'am. Uh, and next, ma'am, uh, I would like, ma'am, or ma'am, is the next one? Okay, ma'am. How to achieve a big goal? How to be, uh, achieve a big goal? And uh, yeah. ma'am, like, uh, as I want to join NDA because one, uh, I want to serve and country as a soldier uh, and for this i have done i am um, i am still doing like ma'am uh, took pcm uh, in 11th class joined express classes to speak good english and because english i uh, because english is required in nd examination and interview and i also do self study and do smart work and uh, this is i learned from express and pd classes so I would like to give credit for this uh, to Mr. Anurag Agrawal sir and Gaurav Ramani sir. And third and most important topic, good health. And what is right and what is wrong for good health? So <clears throat> we should not take for, uh, more junk food because it is very harmful for our physical health. And physical is, health is most important for uh, good mental health because um, uh, a good mind require a good body and a good mind uh, and a good mind can develop only in a uh, in a good body so uh, and also yoga is very effectful uh, for our mental health and physical health and uh, uh, i would like give credit uh, to for this to myself because uh, uh, this is learned for uh, from myself and mostly thank you iFriends Computer for Express Classes and thank you Express Classes for this opportunity and English speaking and uh, mostly thank you uh, Bharti ma'am and all Express and team and thank you to all for listening. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Very yes. good Love Kush. Your presentation is uh, full of facts. But uh, here I would like to mention uh, that uh, uh, in your introduction, uh, there is no need to say that uh, how yeah, many I, members in my family. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, although the presentation is good, the rest presentation, the rest slides are very good. Okay. So, uh, uh, Gurjeet ma'am, can we have other students? Yes. 
now moving ahead i would like to invite chandni singh from expressions india chandni singh if you are here you can uh, start speaking Chandni, I have given you the option to unmute. You can start speaking. Am I audible? Yes. Clearly okay. audible. Good afternoon, respected dignitaries and all the respected participants. My name is Chandni Singh. I am a student of BTEC uh, Computer Science, and I am a student of Expressions too. Uh, I have done my English communicative course with Expression. And uh, before moving ahead, I want to start with a proverb that uh, never give up on someone because uh, with I because when the I is converted into V, the mental illness become wellness. So this proverb gives a great meaning that health is considered as the most precious thing to every individual. A good health does not only means to be physically fit, but it also includes mental and social well-being. So here we are talking about mental health. Mental health refers to a person's psychological, emotional and social well-being. It influences how they feel, how they think and how they behave. Um, man has been able to control life due to his highly developed brain so it's become very important for man to keep both of his body and mind fit but there are certain factors that can unstable your mental health such as depression aggression and negative thinking frustration and many more things that's why people should be aware of the consequences of mental illness and must give out utmost importance to keeping the mind healthy like the physical body is kept healthy. And this effective communication plays a very prominent role because a person with good communication skills can develop effective relationships. That relationships could be personal or professional as there is a very popular idiom that sharing thoughts reduce suffering. And it's true also, because whenever we share our thoughts and feelings, emotions with someone, we feel distressed and lighten ourselves. But a person with poor communication skills can evoke anxiety, depression, and stress, which can lead, uh, lead to social illness and uh, loneliness. As we all are here today for a purpose, and we all are sharing and exchanging our ideas. But uh, I think without a proper communication, it won't have been possible. As I am speaking in front of you all and you are patiently listening to me. So it's all because of a proper communication between us. And uh, for this expression has helped me out in every possible way. If I talk about my expression journey, it was very fruitful because expression has not only improved my communication skills, but also enhanced my confidence level and uh, the way of delivering of thoughts. And especially I would like to thank my teachers who worked on me and uh, put a lot of effort to change my persona. And uh, so uh, I also want to say that communication is a very vital tool. And uh, the most prominent thing that we should know that uh, people are not born with good communication skills. They learn to, through trial, uh, repeated practices, and uh, mm, we can say repeated practice, practices, trial. And uh, I think in this whole scenario, effective communication is a vital tool in mental health setting, and it can open many closed doors in a person's life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chani. Rightly said that without communication, it would have been difficult for us to communicate our ideas to each other. So thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to invite uh, the uh, our next participant from Expressions, Deepshika Uchwal. Deepshika, I would request the team to make her the co-host so that she, she can start speaking. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can start speaking. Hi, everyone. I am Dikshika Oswal. And I am from Indore. I am a student of Express English classes. 
i have learned the communication from these classes which is taught by my teacher kanchan pandey ma'am communication is a key that helps to express ourselves we can express our feeling we can share our thought in four ways reading writing speaking and listening and also in mental health recovery effective communication is essential in building rapport and developing therapeutic relationship good communication can even help speed both physical and mental recovery writing in engagement and therapeutic communication in mental health nursing sandra walker says research has consistently show that it is the human relationship we develop that have the biggest impact on recovery in mental health care successful engagement and therapeutic communication are essential in order to help people find their way out of the maze of problems that may have beset them when someone in anxiety and distress the thing that help humans warm to other a smile a friendly greeting our appreciate i contact may be missing so thank you all that's from all my side thank you so much deepshika for your contribution now i would like uh, like to invite our next uh, student from expressions devika devika saparia i would request the team to make her the co-host devika tapadia yes devika you can unmute yourself and start speaking now am i audible yes you're loud and clear so uh, good afternoon to everyone present here uh, i am devika tapadia from expressions and i am a student of btech first year and uh, so i will start now so some of the most comfort comforting words in the universe are me too that moment when you find out that your struggle is also someone else struggle that you are not alone and that others have been down the same road by mental health we understand a person's behavioral characteristics it means how we think and we act on certain things it also helps to determine how we handle stress depression and anxiety if i talk about communication so in my whole journey of learning english expressions help me a lot to improve in every field whether it is my speaking skills or my personality i'm thankful that i got a chance to learn from expressions now i can communicate in english in a very fluent way communication plays a very vital role in mental health issues being able to communicate how you feel uh, uh, can help others to understand you better and all we want to, uh, is to be understood good communication can even help speed both physical and mental recovery listening is a key component of communication a good communicator should be a good listener too when someone is anxious or distressed the things that helps human warm to others a smile a friendly greeting or appropriate eye contact simple things can make a big, big difference listen, uh, listen actively and show that you are listening be non judgmental people with mental health disorders how they say something uh how they say something may be quite different than someone not living with the mental depression someone who has depression would have longer pauses than someone without depression people with depression and anxiety get interrupted a lot because they pause for a such long period of time in their conversation a people with anxiety has more self focused gestures and by that i mean things related to their body eye contact is also minimal for those with depression everyone aspires to have perfect mental health at its best mental health gives you the ability to enjoy life and cope up with challenges communication can help people to open up with someone who understands them without judging it's a way to get rid of these mental health problems so i just want to conclude my speech by saying that communication has a very prominent place in every person's life by communicating we get to know Uh, that what others are going through we get uh, we get to know the problems that others are facing we can give them advice as per our knowledge that can help them get out of it so in brief i want uh, i want to say that communication is very necessary that's all from my side thank you
Thank you so much, Devika, for your words, for such short and crisp words. Thank you so much. And now I would like to continue uh, with the other student uh, of expressions. I would like to invite Khushi Farkale from expressions. I would request the team to make her the co-host. Kushi, I think, is not here. I cannot see her in the participants. I would like to call... Anjali Sen. I would like to invite Anjali Sen to share her views with us. I would request the team to make her the co-host, please. Yes, Anjali. Hello, Let's start here. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Anjali Sen. I am from Pitha. I am from Madhya Pradesh in India. I have uh, I have done my twelfth last year, and right now I am doing BSc plane. First of all, I am very happy that I got an opportunity to participate in the Global Sustainable Development Summit. As our topic is good health and mental well-being, as it states that the complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not the absence of diseases and or infirmity. Good health and well-being is one of the 17 Sustainable Development Summit which was established by United Nations in 2015. The target of SD, SD, SDGs 3 accept of is healthy life and healthy lifestyle. At last, I would like to say that live your life in your own way. Achieve the goal which you really want in your life. And healthy outside starts from inside. Thank you. And thank you, Bharti ma'am and Malti ma'am for uh, giving me such opportunity. Thank you. Thank great, you so much. Actually, great. Actually, your uh, last phrase is uh, very good. So thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you, dear. Thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Yeah, Gurjeet ma'am, please call next speaker. Uh, ma'am, we are done with the participants. So if you have uh, any of them from your end, you can call their names. Supriya so ma'am, we are done with the participants from Expressions. Yes. Deepak, you want to speak yes, something? Yes, yes. actually, uh, we have, a, yeah, uh, actually for uh, all these uh, participants, the wonderful participants from the Expression, uh, expression English, uh, I would like to say your performance is very good, very enthusiastic, but we have to focus on the particular subject, particular subject, whichever uh, given uh, to deliver the presentation or to deliver the speech. Uh, and many of the students focus on the particular sustainable development goal three. And in a few minutes, actually, we have to wait in a few minutes. We have a very uh, eminent uh, speaker, guest of honor, or we can say that a very eminent personality. Actually, he is a vice president in the Kotak uh, Mahindra Bank, uh, Mr. Praveen Upadhyay. So uh, he will comment all the uh, 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 students' uh, speech and the presentations. So I actually uh, he was uh, he was uh, get disconnected, but he uh, he is again joining us. Uh, meanwhile, in I would like to uh, invite. Yeah, uh, Christiana, yeah, do you want to say something? Yeah, Christiana, are you there? Hello. Uh, good, good day. Yes. Uh, good day to all. Uh, amazing uh, subject, and uh, I will. Uh, Thankful, uh, I will thank uh, for the students because <clears throat> they are uh, pointing uh, not just yoga, meditation, uh, just uh, learning the language and learning some new skills and new uh, knowledge is the self the self de development, uh, self confidence, and that is growing inside and that. That is bring to all people well-being, and that is amazing how the uh, students notice that, and they improve their 
better than me in English. They, they improve uh, the communication, the the social the social skills, etc. And that was amazing how they uh, work on their self. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Supriya. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And actually, we have this student from the Expression English, Deepak Dhakar. So I would like to request technical team, uh, please take the co-host to Deepak Dhakar because he is continuously watching and observing all the uh, means of presentations and all the guest speakers comment their phrases, their taglines, and actually he continuously messages me uh, since morning. So I would like to request technical team, uh, please uh, uh, make the co-host to Deepak Dhakar. Ma'am, he is. Uh, yes, you can start. Yes. Ma'am, uh, I'm audible, ma'am. Yes, you're clearly audible. Yes. yes. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, Deepak, first of all, yeah, Deepak, first of all, I would like to say, yeah, uh, means uh, there is a big salute to your uh, patients. You thank are you from me. here from this since morning. So please, thank yeah, you, please proceed. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, good evening, good uh, afternoon, uh, good morning, uh, according to uh, your place. Uh, and uh, I am Deepak Dhakar, and uh, I am talking about uh, uh, SDG goal, uh, goal three, good health and well-being. And so, uh, poor, uh, poor health uh, uh, constitutes suffering and uh, deprivation of the most fundamental kind over the. Uh, over the years, significant uh, uh, stress have been made in increasing the increasing life expectancy and uh, reducing some of the common pillars associated uh, associate with uh, child and uh, maternal uh, mortality. And uh, we have made immense uh, progress global. Uh, Globally, in uh, finding never uh, finding never treatments, vaccine, and uh, technology for uh, uh, technology for uh, healthcare, but uh, universal effort, uh, affordable access to uh, healthcare remains a challenge. Uh, not only does uh, disease impact the well-being of uh, uh, an um, uh, uh, invid uh, individual, it uh, uh, burdens family and public resources, weakens uh, societies and so uh, 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 potential. Uh, the health and well being of people at all acts, uh, therefore, lies at the heart of sustainable development protection. Yeah. Uh, for diseases, not only fundamentals of survival, but it uh, uh, enable opportunity for everyone and uh, strengths economic growth and uh, uh, provide, uh, uh, prosperity. Um, the international community thought uh, uh, Goal 3 has uh, uh, committed itself to a uh, global effort to uh, Eradicate diseases, strange uh, treatment, and uh, healthcare, uh, and address uh, address new and emerging health issues. It calls for uh, it calls for innovation and uh, uh, research uh, in this area to further uh, further uh, intense public uh, policy effort, a uh, public policy effort, a uh, holistic. Uh, approach uh, we better health will require uh, ensure universal access to healthcare and to make medicine and uh, uh, vaccine affordable. Uh, it also calls for a uh, renewed focus on mental health issue uh, suicide in the second leading uh, cause of death globally between the age of uh, 19 to uh, 19 to 15, 25 and uh, Finally, health and well-being uh, are closely linked with the quality of uh, our environment. And Goal 3 also aims to uh, sustainability, sustainability um, reduce the numbers of days and uh, alliances. Post by air, water and soil pollution and uh, uh, continuing sun. Uh, so thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, thank you so much everyone 
uh, for listening to me. Thank, thank you, you thank you, Deepak. Thank you very much. Thank you so and much. Actually, I'm, I'm very happy, ma'am, because uh, I got a chance, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Deepak. Thank you, Deepak, for all your patience. For means, uh, actually, you uh, uh, you are giving so much time to this summit. So I am very grateful to have you. Thank you, dear. Yes. Uh, I would like to request technical team to make the co-host Praveen Upadhyay sir. Actually, he has joined us. Uh, Ma'am, there is one student left, Bharat. He is waiting uh, like since morning. So, can we call him? Yes. Lalit Makwane is also there waiting. Lalit Makwane is also waiting since okay. morning. Bharat, you okay. can uh, on your okay, video yes. and can start. Yes, and please make, uh, meanwhile, please make the Praveen Upadhyay sir co-host. Ma'am, he's made the co-host now. Praveen sir is the co-host. After two students, will call out Praveen sirs. Yeah. Thank you, sure, thank you so sure, much. Sure, Okay. Bharat, yes, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I am audible. Yes, you are. Hi, I am Bharat Devra. I am from Express MBS classes. I have done this communicative course, which is taught by Express teacher Kanchan Pandey, ma'am. Uh, uh, I feel this communic this communicative course has really helped me. Uh, after this course, I feel uh, uh, in, it helps in many things uh, like when we communicate with someone because we can express our feelings, our thoughts uh, to each other and by thinking in Hindi also. Uh, through the communication, we can transfer our information to each other. Uh, it can be done in four ways by speaking, writing, listening and reading. Uh, as I have anger issues, uh, after this uh, after this communicative course, I feel uh, this communicative course has really helped me. Earlier, even I wanted to express myself, but I was not able to. But now I feel very confident. It has really given me a good change in my life. English can develop a confidence in an individual and this what expression starters. It has been a confidence in me. And because of that, I am able to express myself on such a big platform. Thank you, experience and team. Thank you so much, Bharat. Now I would like to invite Lalit Makwane from Expressions. He's been waiting from a long time. Lalit. I would request the team to make him the co-host, please. Lalit, you can unmute yourself. Lalit, Lalit Makwane. Lalini has already spoken. I would request you to make Lalit Makwane the co-host. Uh, yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes. Greeting to everyone. Uh, my name is Lalit Makwane. I am doing diploma from Polytechnic College. Uh, I am from Dhar Madhya Pradesh in India. Sustainable development is development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. The concept of uh, sustainable development can be interpreted in many different ways. But at its uh, core uh, uh, is an approach to development that looks to balance different and often competing, competing needs against as uh, an awareness of the environmental, social and economic limitation we, uh, we face as a society. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel and act. It also has determined how we handle stress related to other and make healthy choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life 
although the terms are often used inter interchangeably or mental health and mental illness are not the same abortion can experience poor mental health and not be diagnosed with a mental illness like wise a personal diagnose um, diagnose with a mental illness can experience period of physical mental and social well being thank you expression classes and also uh, bharti ma'am to give me this golden chance thank you thank you so much lalit now i would like to invite praveen sir praveen sir over to you praveen upadhyay sir yeah hi so basically uh, i was listening from last half an hour uh, about the students what they are talking about and i'm uh, feeling good that the, from the remote area especially of mp people are talking about on sustainable development which is a good sign that they are doing um, exponentially well in that field and uh, they are working hard hard for uh, giving the uh, things on the platform so it's a good uh, method to uh, develop the skill of the student who are from the remote area and i'm proud to be a um, co-host of this uh, forum um, because i am a banker from profession and i um, take an interview of lot of student who are from the remote area they face a lot of difficulty especially in english especially in uh, other fields uh, so now it's a good for them that they are getting in this online platform which will help them to do well so good uh, good uh, work from the organization and good work from the team also who was working on it so priya madam it's uh, i am proud of part of it thank you praveen sir thank you for uh, thank you very much for joining us actually uh, this uh, small efforts uh, by the uh, side of the students uh, are the remarkable to achieve the targets of the sustainable development goal 3 So thank you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. On the yeah. behalf of Team Witty Gossip Association, I am very humbled and honored to have you on the platform, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Supriya, ma'am. Uh, there is yeah. one more uh, participant left yeah. from Gurjeet, our expressions. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I think it's uh, she is Shashti Verma, right? Neha Vishwakarma. Okay, Neha Vishwakarma. Okay. Yeah. So I would like to invite Neha, Neha Vishwakarma, to speak a few words. I would request the team to make the make her the co-host. Yeah. Thank you so much, team. Neha, you can start speaking now. Okay, ma'am. First of all, Hare Krishna to all of you, and good morning, everyone. I am Neha Vishwakarma from Bhopal. I have completed my BA. I am a homemaker. i never saw myself as a working as a working woman as i always thought that i can't manage professional and personal life together but covid has changed my entire life during the lockdown everything was closed and many people lost their jobs my husband was also struggling because of that because of that i was depressed as i couldn't help i help him after that i decided to improve my skills and join vadwani institute of computer technology in bhopal there i realized that my my english is quite poor and if i want to learn anything then i need proper english and i also felt that whenever i used to talk with someone that time i was not able to answer them in english so i joined express english course these session are helping me to express my thoughts in english it's been 15 days since i joined the express english class and i am feeling confident now i have already started helping my husband in his business and i am sure now that after completing my english course i will be able to start my own business for which i have started planning expression is provided providing personality development session in which i am learning professional etiquette 
so i would like to thank team expression and my mentor itishri ma'am for providing me a great opportunity of learning and for boosting my morale thank you thank you everyone thank you so much neha uh, now, now i would like to invite zainab ali to uh, be here with us i would request the team to make zainab ali the co-host so that he can speak zainab ali i would request the team to make him the co-host hello i am audible here yeah. Yes, and I'm your audible. Hi, everyone. This is Dana Bali. I am from Bhopal. I I have completed become from Bhopal Girls School Girls College. I want to share my experience. When I was in college, I always used to think that English is the language. I can't speak ever because I did not find the environment there. that was directly affecting my mental health as i always want to be a fashion designer for that i need strong communication and a bit of techno savvy environment at that time my father taught me to dream big so i decided to learn so i decided to learn computer skill for that i joined badwani institute i am passing pgdc from there while running computer i realized everything was in english again i got depressed because difficult to understand it was difficult for me to understand things in english i knew that important in the way to achieve my aim so i finally decided to join express english after joining the class i feel that english is not tough as i thought was it is only been 15 days for me to join the class and i am confidently speaking on this international platform it is like a dream come true for me now i am confident that after completing my english course i will speaking fluently and no one can stop me to achieving my aim with the help of personality development session express english is teaching the nitty gritty of the nitty gritty of the professional world which is building my background is strong and with all this now i am relaxed as well as i am very happy and i am going to be a good fashion designer soon thank you thank you dear thank you dear janet Yes. Uh, now I would like to invite Urmila Osari from Expressions. Urmila Osari, I would request the team to make her the co-host. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, team. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Urmila Osari. Basically, I am from Jalosanjar village in the Ujjain district. I am pursuing a diploma degree from Dhar Polytechnic College. When I was in school, I always look English speaking people on TV and dreams of myself as an English speaker, which makes me happy. But at the same time, I don't have the environment and much resources turn my happiness into sadness my home my family speak malvi language and when i shared with my mom that i want to become a software engineer that time my mom was like oh bhai farate wali angrezi bolegi to bhi tv walo jaisi that time i just loved on her reaction but now when i speak can't english import my mom she always smiles with her proud and i can clearly see her shining eyes 
all this happiness because of appreciation scientific method of learning i always thought that learning is important for our career but when i completed my schooling and decided to the a uh, job time i felt the many reaction that i realized that if i really want a successful career that i need to improve my skills learning course books and it scores a top position in academics in not enough for getting a job as now does job is not dream degree belt the selection is based on skills so i join express english classes to my develop myself expression have an easy technique which is delivered by well trained trainers with the help of activities before joining expression i was very nervous at as i had never thought that i will be able to speak in form of you all thank you expression and lovely bharti ma'am for giving me this confidence and making my career journey easy and thank you everyone for listening me thank you so much urmila i'm sure speaking is really valuable for these students thank you once again team expressions for all your efforts and all the students of team expressions for putting in their efforts and time and showing us patience as you are here since morning waiting for your turn thank you once again everyone the good thing about this forum also which i found that this will uh, allow their parents to move their children outside the particular location so this will be a more helpful for the children to fight uh, when they want to go sometimes their parents say ki are tum kahan is bheed mein jaoge but when they speak like the girl who was there who was speaking in english right now her mother was uh, more uh, happy with her english so this will help such type of parents also to allow them to that you can go outside the uh, particular station and then go for job and uh, do whatever what they want to do this will also help so it's a good effort now sure sir i hope the efforts continuous efforts of expressions keep the uh, students the students from remote area especially to grow and make their parents proud thank you so much i uh, supriya ma'am yes we like yeah, actually uh, we have the continuous message from the shrishti verma actually she is also the student from the express uh, express in english so can we okay. have the shrishti verma please yes okay we can call shrishti also shrishti i would request the team to make her the co-host shrishti verma Yes, you see, you are the co-host now, and you can speak. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. And I would like to request technical team. Yeah, please mute. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of disturbance at your back. I think. Yes, you can start speaking now. Shushi. Hello, ma'am. I am audible. Yes, yes you are. I am Shri Verma. I am from Peter. I am from Kanpur. And uh, thank you, ma'am, for uh, you giving you giving a uh, big opportunity. And uh, I say uh, today's topic uh, today's topic uh, mental health and well-being. Uh, mental well-being is an integral part of our. Uh, over the health society often think of health as something biological and physical health as something uh, the condition of our bodies how health how healthy we eat the physical exercise uh, we do a key component of health is uh, missing from missing from this thought uh, its mental wellbeing which encompasses of our inner working and the way we describe how we are in our life uh this important part of who we are has multiple meaning 
this uh, trait which are all actually skills we can practice and uh, develop are the part of mental well-being self acceptance self of uh, sense of self as part of something greater uh, sense of self as uh, independent in, independent rest than uh, depend, dependent on an uh, other for identify or happiness knowing and uh, using our unique character strength accurate uh, uh, part uh, of a reality you know that we can't mind it and that uh, our thoughts are not always true and thank you ma'am for giving me a big up on opportunity thank Here, you yeah actually i would like to mention that uh, shrishti verma is only uh, the uh, means speaker from the expression ma'am you're mute supriya ma'am you're mute yeah yeah so here i would like to mention that uh, srishti is only the one student who directly speak to the point actually he started with the uh, sustainable development goal 3 subject and he end on the sustainable development goal 3 subject so from the uh, means from the first half uh, uh, from uh, his address to the last half uh, of his uh, address half her address sorry uh, he actually uh, ta uh, talked about what is the uh, means main objective of the mental health and well being which is our the uh, uh, topic of our uh, today's uh, uh, day 3 so uh, srishti congratulate uh, uh, once again because you are actually speak very well about the mental health and well being thank you very much dear thank you ma'am thank you ma'am for giving my uh... big opportunity thank you so much ma'am okay so gurjeet we uh, have uh, some more students or not um no ma'am all the students have spoken okay okay so it's a really a great learning actually we are sitting here from 10 am ist and now uh, yeah it's it's a 3 pm so thank you very much all of you thank you expression english thank you Uh, indore institute of management and research center uh, for organizing this event for uh, uh, means uh, connecting people around the world thank you vitti gossip association to uh, conduct this global peace and sustainable development summit 2022 and tomorrow with the goal for quality education we will meet again and we learn we will definitely learn something a uh, new skills uh, related to the education thank you very much thank you christiana for joining us thank you dear yeah. okay so it's a time to say goodbye thank you very much for all all guest speakers all guest of honors around the world yeah and i would like to request uh, to the technical team please end the meeting thank you very much thank you everyone namaste and goodbye I would request the technical team to end this meeting officially please